Boom, we live. All right. Mean mugging. All right. We lost the man. So we're going to stall for a minute here. I'm going to try to hit him up on Discord and see what he did to himself. <laughs> Shit. Let's see. All right, so we're trying to get Mike from Mean Mugging in games. He's going to give us the um, player perspective. Uh, and he's a he's a bit of a gameplay professional. So um, I invited him on to talk about Dream Quest in particular. And then um, we're going to get to a fun little uh, segment where we'll go through the, a bunch of the cards that were removed from um, the latest TTS uh, simulator update and see which we think will be in... Um, Alpha, and which we think might get pushed to Arthurian Legends, or, you know, I think some of these artworks could get uh, removed entirely, so it'd be pretty interesting to see. Um, hopefully Mike's able to join us, or if there's somebody else that's um, following along that's um, played the game quite a bit, uh, we might be able to figure out a way to get you added into the stream and have you talk about your gameplay experience and some of your thoughts. All right, here's Mike private messaging me. Can you hear me? I lost you. Hey, there we go. All right. Mike, you're back. Hey, nice. what's up, man? Sorry I, about I was that. stalling. <laughs> yeah, all good. All right. Yeah. So I was just um saying that I had invited you onto the stream because you're you're uh what I consider a gameplay professional. <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, I know you you're pretty you played a lot and um you're you're helping Ira and a few of the other guys judge and and run the um what is it, a play league? Why don't you talk about that for a minute? Like what the league's about, like who can join, what the prizes are, how that's yeah, so work. it's a unofficial um league for sorcery contest realm that we're playing on tts because of course unfortunately we don't have uh cards at hand um but this is something that ira who is part of the sorcery team as is doing this uh, on the side so like i said this is a unofficial event but it's hosted by ira um anybody could join i still think he can join it's a league that runs eight weeks it started on january 5th it's free to play um like i said it runs eight weeks and then february 19th it ends and then we tally up the points and if you make the top eight cut we play to uh the top four and then the ultimate winner um first place you get 39 packs uh second place i think you nice. get 13 or 15 packs third and fourth place you get 10 packs and there's also i think actually ira bumped it up it used to be three participation random prizes now it's six and those random prizes consist of um, 10 packs. Uh, so for just nice. participating. So, yeah. So everyone that participates get it? Or is that going to be like a random no, no, lottery it's a system? Ran, yeah, random gotcha. lottery yeah. system of six lucky individuals. Gotcha. Okay. Sweet. Okay. And then, yeah, for those that don't know, Ira is, um, I don't know if he's a full-timer with the company or not, but from what I understand, he's on the development team, mm -hmm. right? So he's designing uh, the card mechanics and things like that, working with Emberleaf and some of the other guys. Yep. Sweet. All right, cool, man. Well, thanks for joining. Um, I asked yeah, Jan for, for yeah, that's awesome. So you got a good channel. You do a lot of good gameplay content. I think you have like a tutorial on how to play the game. Um, so you know those that are into playing, he's your go-to guy. I'm more like on the art and um, collector type uh, side of the spectrum. So I I rely on the guys that, that play the game for like insights on what are the more powerful cards, um, that type of thing. So we wanted to talk about Dream Quest. Since that card, um, Dream Quest is going to be coming to auction via uh, the Collector Art House um, Discord. So on the Discord, I'm showing the Collector Art House website right now, but we run the auctions on the Discord and in the Facebook group. So this is being streamed in both locations. It looks like we have a few people piping in from both um, from uh, YouTube, the Collector Art House YouTube. But the auctions run from the Facebook group and then they're mirrored on Discord because a lot of people don't like messing with Facebook. Um, so they don't have Facebook accounts or vice versa. They don't use discord. So it kind of broadens the market for everybody. If they want to bid on sample cards or painting sketches, things we run in there, um, they have the opportunity and they're not like excluded based on platform access. Um, since everyone doesn't have the same social media, right? So the, um, dream quest, I'm going to show a picture of Elvira holding the dream quest uh painting and then we'll we'll talk with mike a bit about the card mechanics so i'll show the card and we'll talk about what it does in the game 
Um, but I kind of wanted to open with showing uh, what the painting looks like. This is actually in some context um, about the background of it, right? So this is, um, a lot of sold like all of her alpha paintings. A lot of the artists early on sold all of their artwork. So it's becoming increasingly scarce. Um, I know some of the original Magic the Gathering artists have been kind of holding out till after alpha release. And some have sold like a few pieces here and there. Um, they've gotten like good private offers or they've gone to shows like the IX Art Festival, um, which is an annual show they do in Reading, Pennsylvania. And a lot of a lot of magic artists go there and other um, genres. It's not just magic. It's all types of games. And even like outside of TCGs, a lot of like big time artists um, go and display their work and they sell it. Right. So some have sold it. Long story short, a lot are completely sold out, but some of the artists have a few pieces um, left. Uh, Elvira sold all of hers except for this one here, which is Dream Quest. It's a unique rarity card. So it's kind of a big deal from that perspective. And also it's like a pretty amazing artwork. <laughs> you know, if you look at it, it's very intricate and detailed and um, just looks really cool and iconic looking like right out of the gate. Um, so the other fun thing about it is, and I'm going to, I'm working on like an interview with her that's going to come up on the Collector Art House website. So there'll be more context. And I have a few process uh, images. This is her just kind of posing with the final piece, but she had a couple other good ones that showed a sketch, an early sketch concept, which was significantly different than what the final version looks like here. It was kind of inverted and it had like a different um, compositional uh, feel than like what you see in the final version here. So this, she's, this shows that this is like her actual desk space where she does her artwork you know, painting. She, she comes from the Magic the Gathering altar scene. And this is kind of like her big breakthrough opportunity to actually do full scale artwork for a TCG. Um, so that's great for her. This piece, she was originally like holding out and keeping it for her personal collection, I think, or kind of like a memento of her first big professional experience. But she's decided recently to sell it. Um, she's got a major life event coming up um, and it's going to help fund that, you know. So um, it's going, you know, some, some of the people are like, oh, it's, you know, I, even I was like, oh man, are you sure you really want to do that? I thought that was, that one's for you. Right. And it's always kind of like sad in a way, but it's going to a good cause. So she was like really excited about it actually. Um, it's going to help her fund something else that's significant, but in a lot of her artwork, she hides, um, you've probably seen this Mike in a lot of the cards where there's like a big text box right here, right. Mm -hmm. Um, where the game mechanic goes. So you as a player, that's something you're looking at all the time. And when you look at the full art images, and we could go look at some, you know, later on the website, oftentimes there's, so there's two, two ways that the artists approach it. There's either some like negative void space that they build in down here, because typically, and if you go look at like some of my interviews and some of the behind the art features, you'll see that there is, um, I, I usually include like process uh, images or sketches that I get from the artists. And several of them have given me like images of a template, which just shows kind of like a box outline here. And then the title box shows up up here, you know, and then they they um, basically overlay that on their sketch or their painting to kind of get the compositional feel and understand what's actually going to be apparent in the final um, card print and not. So she knows like she knew where this space would be. And when this is when we go to the card, in a moment, you'll see that you kind of see like the arm or the wrist um, coming up here, but this hand is completely obscured. That's one Easter egg. And then I was talking to her about this recently and she was like, oh, by the way, that's not all, you know, like I completely missed that this book was over here and mm -hmm. there's some writing on this book as well. Um, so I wanna show that and I will enlarge this. So the text here is kind of funny. Um, like I say, she's got a great sense of humor and um, and a lot of her pieces, she, uh, she hides little nuggets like this, right? So I don't know, is this, I don't know how well this is coming across. So I'm going to try to read it. It says, Hey there. I think some of this, I guess, I'm trying guessing a little bit because it's hard to see. It's a little blurry, but it says, Hey there, you, yes, you. <laughs> I hope you, um, what does it say? I hope you're, can you make out what that says? I, I hope you're are you having a good day. I hope you're having a good day day yeah, yeah good, call. A good day uh, -huh. uh anyway made you look and smile love and then i think that says l like for elvira <laughs> that's awesome so that's like <laughs> uh, the cool thing is like i've seen a lot of paintings because i help the artists like sell those or i help other i do consignment and help other people resell so i've had like the great fortune one of the most exciting um aspects of that is getting to see a lot of the art in person and like when you see it full scale you discover stuff like this right like when you look at the image on the last page that we just saw 
you really can't um, make out what that is. Even if you right. zoomed, it's probably gonna be pretty blurred. So she like took a picture of the original painting and sent this to me so we can make it out a little better. But it's kind of cool to discover those little little nuggets when you see them in person. Um, that's, and that's, that's, yeah. that's awesome, man. <laughs> I, I love, and like you were saying about the text box, you know, I, you know, when you're looking at the card, you're not seeing any of that because that 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 book's hidden and and the uh, was it the the hand right? They had like the, yep. the creature's hand trying to reach for her is missing. So yeah, it's it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, while we're on that point, let's go to the card on her website. So I have it organized by artist here on the page. And yeah, so you see like the little, like when you look at this, you, you wouldn't even know that's a risk creeping up. Like I certainly didn't, you know, I right. had no idea until I saw the full art and then it becomes like, oh, wow, that's, that's actually pretty, pretty sweet. And the book here looks like it's just nothing. You know, mm -hmm. she actually told me like originally there was no text on this book. It was just simple. You know, it just looked like an open book, blank page. And then she worked that into there knowing that that would be obscured and it'd be fun for people to discover and then as you know like on the foil versions we'll have the foil face that looks just like this and then the back will be the full art yeah. you know so you don't have to like go to some website to discover these things i mean the foils are going to be hard to get like a lot of us won't be able to get our hands on every every one of the 400 plus unfortunately but right. for those that do the full arts are going to reveal all this stuff and it's, it's pretty exciting <laughs> so let's talk about the um you know, the painting is going to come to auction next Friday. It's Friday the 13th, which is kind of funny. It's like a 24-hour auction. It'll kick off at 8 p.m. Um, and close like after 24 hours the next day. And then um, the uh, that, that'll that be again on the Collector Art House Discord and in the, um, what, what do you call it? The Sorcery Contested Realm Fan Page and Marketplace Facebook group. It's mm -hmm. kind of a mouthful. So it's, it's mirrored on both. People can bid there if they're interested. But what I want to have you on for, Mike, um, before we get into the stuff coming later, is uh, tell us a bit about like what this card does, what it means to be a unique, you know, how many copies you could carry in your deck, and like give us some insights on the power level and how meta-relevant it's going to be, in your opinion. Yeah, so um, I think this card is going to be a absolute staple in any air deck that splashes air, you know, fire, water, or earth, because you got four elements. Um, so you, you, you have the, those four elemental thresholds you could play. If you are playing air, which you could see, you know, on the card where it has the mana cost of one and then the triangle with a line through it, which uh, indicates air. Um, and then at the bottom in the text box, you see unique magic glimpses beyond the, the veil. So unique meaning you can only have one of this card in your deck. That's it. That's all you can have. Um, and this card is very, very strong because uh, it's kind of hard to read the full text, but uh, from playing the card a lot, essentially what you're going to do is is your your avatar is going to be disabled or your spellcaster will be disabled. And then on your next turn, you could tutor any card you want, which is very, very powerful. So... You know, if you need something early game, you could utilize Dream Quest, go grab a card that you need, put a minion down or any card down. Uh, mid game, you know, you, you could do the same thing. Or late game, uh, this is a perfect win win con. You know, you could go and grab a, you know, a, a, a lightning bolt or a thunderbolt and uh, end the game. So, I mean, this, this card, hands down, card draw, in my opinion, in this game is is essential you need it um if you want to win in in this game you you need the card draw and dream quest is probably the most powerful tutoring card you could have uh to play in, in your arsenal so fantastic card it's an absolute staple if you're playing there sweet yeah so you know my background in gaming is i played magic like in the 90s you know a long ass time ago i haven't played for the past 20 plus years so i don't even know i'm not up to speed with like the latest mechanics in magic and i played like maybe hearthstone like the past few years just casually right <laughs> so uh -huh. like i recall from like magic they had you could play spells um certain spells like on your opponent's turn or your own turn is that also true of sorcery could you play this card on your opponent's turn to try to no uh, no so that mechanic no nope. okay the so sorcery back Back in the early development stages, and you'll probably know this because you've, you've auctioned some of these cards off, you had uh, mm -hmm. quick counter spells, quick, quick spells, quick magic spells. 
um, which would be the equivalent mm. in Magic the Gathering as an instant where you can play it on your opponent's turn. Um, gotcha. You can't do that anymore. With the exception, mm. there's one card in the game, which is Dodge Roll. Dodge Roll mm. is the only quick instant card you could play in Sorcery at the moment. Sweet. Okay. So you play this, and this is magic spells. You play it at some point on your own turn, on your own character, and then you you want to do it like on a character you're probably going to attack with to to proc yeah. this to make yeah, it get so, damaged and allow you to draw the next turn or yeah, go search so, for a card. Uh, in the text box, it reads: "An allied spellcaster falls asleep and is disabled." So, spellcaster, an avatar mm. in this game is a spellcaster. There's other minions in this game that can be spellcasters, so you can attach this card to you know, minion with spellcaster on it. However, 90, I would say 95% of the time, everybody's playing this card on their avatar. So you'll do an avatar's ability. Uh, you'll utilize the avatar. Then at the very end of your turn, you'd play a dream quest on your avatar. So then it's disabled. And then on your turn, you wake it up and then you're able to tutor a card that you, that, that you want to put in your hand. Okay, sweet. Yeah, so that tutor effect, you know, obviously that's made famous by Demonic Tutor and Magic right. Gathering, right? Are there other games that have had that, or is that kind of unique to Magic? And that's what, I mean, it's obviously super powerful to be able to go search your deck for any card you want. That's that's a given. I'm just curious. Right. Have you have you seen that in other TCGs? I've seen it in, in a few different TCGs. I mean, you know, not yeah. being the, the I mean, like equivalent, um, you know, the factor of, of searching your deck, but yeah, gotcha. I mean. From demonic tutor being so iconic, you know, for Magic the Gathering, yeah. Um, it yeah, it, I think every almost every game that I know of that I've played uh, uses some kind of a tutor card. Nice, okay. And that, this is the only one that currently exists in Sorcery. You said right at the moment, um, the tutor effect or the only no, so this card is the only one that could grab any card. It doesn't specify mm. ordinary. It doesn't specify exceptional elite or unique it just says next turn if it's uh, still asleep you may wake and search your uh, spell book for a card just a card um there is other mm. tutor cards in the game but there is uh limitations uh, on on what you can and cannot grab from your deck um like uh, i think there's a card called essential beast i think it is and it's uh mm. you could grab uh, that many um, beasts of X value. Um, so, but there, there is gotcha. different, um, cards, uh, that you can play the tutor, but, but this one by far is the most powerful tutoring card you could play. Cool. And I noticed the, um, wasn't the Demo demonic tutor a similar casting cost, like two mana I, roughly. I think it's you something remember? like that. Oh, I don't maybe really, one. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just noticing here that it's like, how do you interpret this again? Just so for the viewers that maybe not not familiar with the game, yeah. The so one sort of over threshold, yeah. Assorted animals. Thank you, uh, shovels and rope one. Yeah. Yes, assorted animals. I'll so that, that that's another moment. tutor tutor card. But yes, yeah, so just like you're saying, uh, the one mana right there in the in the top left of the card, you'll see it with a circle with a one, meaning yeah. you just need one land or one sight, uh, and then the triangle to the right of it is your threshold. So you need one site and one of your sites need to be a air site to play this card. Okay. So if you had only one air site in, in play, that would satisfy this condition. That is correct. Even that. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. I was thinking, um, as you were saying that before shovels chimed in about the assorted animals, cause that's a hilarious, I love that card from uh Vasily. <laughs> so I'm going to go dig that up and show that really quick just the just the flavor of it <laughs> i mean the picture of it is is pretty hilarious in right itself it's like literally assorted animals <laughs> so i don't know you know one funny I, i'm trying to remember like if that was always the name of this card or i want to say this this card may have appeared pretty late like in the more recent um tts update so we hadn't seen it early on but like a lot of the name changes a lot of the card titles have changed through development and mm -hmm. they're either like to be more flavorful in a funny way or more like iconic sounding um, in, in, from what I've noticed too. And then you have a lot of like, um, like wording, the, the wording is very precise typically in the type line text. So it says elite magic of Motley Menagerie. And there's a lot of um, uh, alliteration, I guess is the right phrase if, I, mm -hmm. if, I'm, uh, if I remember from grammar. So that this, I've seen this like a lot in the latest updates. So I think I heard, um, 
through the grapevine that maybe Nick Reynolds, the co-creator, was the guy that was really in charge of um, the typeline text. Hopefully I got that right. I'm sure like Eric had a hand in it and developers and whatnot. But they actually, um, there's a guy that showed up in in my Discord, Collector Art House Discord, that said he, w- he was like a friend of Eric and he had worked with him, I think on Path of Exile, um, which is obviously the, the major success that Eric had before um, Sorcery. And then he, he was also involved early on. In, he's like a writer, you know, or like a, I think he's like a lore lore writer, you know, okay, um, writes yeah. like the flavor and lore of like games. He might have actually worked on Flesh and Blood, too. Okay. Um, but he worked on Sorcery and I believe Path of Exile with with Grinding Gear Games. And he was like early on helping the, the team, Eric and um, and Nick, presumably write like some of this flavor text. You know, flavor text shows up in the text box, but the type line text, the titles. Um So there was some early stuff and then like it's evolved and changed so much. We see in the sample cards. Uh, it sometimes is night and day different um, from that versus the alpha version. And everything on the website here is is the alpha, the latest alpha version. Um, but I just noticed that a lot recently, the alliteration <laughs> that happens on that typeline text. And it's right. always like something pretty funny or like really epic sounding, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's cool. Yeah, but that's a that's an amazing artwork by Vasily. He's a he's a great artist. His style is like so, so unique. No, I he's- love it. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. It's and like, like and going back to the to the flavor yeah. text, man. That's that's what really like I laugh mm-hmm. every time I see some of these cards. You're right. I'm like, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, that's what it makes a real fun game. Like like yeah. I say, I played Magic like years ago, Hearthstone. So I've you know I collected Flesh and Blood a little bit, um, but I can't recall like any game that's like really invests so much time and energy into like the flavor text, the type line text, because the type line text. I mean. If I recall correctly, in Magic, you have like a card type, you know, mm-hmm. um, up here above the game mechanic. It doesn't have like a, a one liner like this. So it's right. like an extra flavor element um, that like really complements the artwork really well and the card title and makes it all synergistic and like a lot more fun, you know, a fun game in general, I think. And just like uh, just showing this card where it says Elite Magic of Motley Menagerie, like you said, the Elite keyword right there in this is a uh, mini you can only have two of these cards in your deck so yeah, yeah really neat i love it it's a fantastic yeah. card beautiful card yep all right so we talked about let me let me pull down this little banner here we're going to get off the topic of the um dream quest so thanks for your insights on that that was pretty sweet um and then so i wanted to play this game of in or out of alpha <laughs> <laughs> so I just like about an hour ago, I added this page um, at collectorhouse.com. So when you click on sorcery cards at the top, just so people know how to navigate this, you're going to find like an image of all the different artists. Um, the site is really more artist centric, I would say, um, with all the different like artist backgrounds behind the art um, articles and interviews with artists and things like that. Right. So that's why I have it sorted by artist. But you can also hover over and find a few other pre-stage filters. You know, I'm kind of like a rookie at web design. I had to learn all this from scratch, right? So I did it probably a very archaic, like old-fashioned way. So I have like a menu. And if you, so the the one searchable way is like we were just looking at um, Elvira cards, right? So you'd click on her image and you'd find all her cards. But if you just hover, hover over the top here, there's a few other categories. Like if you want to see all cards in the set says all cards and then um each of the different element types and things spells versus sites and then avatars but i added this unconfirmed for alpha and this is um pretty interesting like all of the there's 33 cards on this page just for context and then um there's 32 that were introduced at some point along the way or were in tts i think in the last i want to say that was there a tts update in september and then again maybe early november yeah, roughly. I think it was. I think it was uh, July, mm-hmm. August. I think August or September, like you said. And then mm-hmm. we had another uh, one, which was version zero point eight in October, and that's what we have currently right now. Okay. Yeah. So there's three, as I recall, because I know, like, looking in my folders, how I built the page. There was one, like, roughly in May. Then again, like you say, August, September ish. And then October. And then this is like what we expect to see. Everything except this page is what we expect to be the final version for Alpha. So, what this page is, this is all the cards that were not um, included in the latest TTS. And for those that are new, um, that's Tabletop Simulator. You can go play the game on that simulator. Um, so, those are cards that are not in there. 
So we don't know if they're in alpha or not. So um, I went and like gathered all the cards and slapped them on one page here. And then the one exception to that is initially when the team sent me the update to um, update my website here with all the alpha cards, uh, Ball Lightning was included, this Alan Pollock card, Ball Lightning. And it was an elite magic um, spell. And then they came back like a couple weeks later and like, oh, you know, we decided that's not going to be an alpha. So we know this one has been pulled. Um, it's kind of interesting because I have a sample card of that. And some of the guys are speculating like initially I was like, if it's not an alpha, that hurts the value, right? Like, I think it's like really epic and cool to be in the first debut release of a game. But some some others were like arguing, you know, if it's not an alpha, it, for one, it, there's no guarantee it's going to be an Arthurian Legends or something else. So it might be the one and only print. And there's so few sample cards that people care about that from a rarity and scarcity perspective. Mm -hmm. um, or if it is included in Arthurian Legends, I think sample cards are like a one and done deal. You know, they were included... They're, the purpose fundamentally is to test the print of the card, you know, the, the, the print quality with your with your major um, printing factory and make sure the quality is to your standards and everything like that, right? Or play around with like color saturation and optimize it to your liking. Um, but they were also given to YouTube influencers early on. I, I started doing this kind of stuff like much later, so I didn't, I didn't get any of these personally. Likewise. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but some of the bigger um, YouTubers like four or five different guys got the full set of uh, pre-con decks. So they mm -hmm. got, um, what is it? Earth, air, water, wind. Uh, they got the full decks of each of those. So they got all, like, it's like 180 sample cards. It's insane. Right. And then um, Red Zone Rogue got like 12 packs, which we call the silver packs because there was no art printed on them. And then Team Covenant did a box opening where they got a, a full booster box of what we call art packs because it has the final artwork. Um, printed on the actual, actual pack, uh, packaging. Um, so it was, I think, um, you typically see samples. Maybe you could tell me from your experience with other games, I'm assuming we're only going to see sample cards for the alpha debut and it wouldn't be something, maybe the company might do it for like Arthurian legends and beta and stuff like that. But I highly doubt they're going to disseminate them again. It was kind of like a high end, uh, backer incentive, you know, it was thrown in. It was right. for so for one, it was like for the marketing to get out to the big YouTube influencers, and then also as a kind of like reward for high high dollar backers, right? Mm -hmm. So, have you seen that? Is that consistent with like I know MetaZoo had samples. I mean, did they have samples in their follow up releases as well, or is it was it a one and done with the Alpha debut? I no, honestly, I, I think it's just a one and done. To be be quite honest with you, um, okay, <clears throat> yeah, I, I can't really sp speak on MetaZoo. I don't, I'm the big meta zoo player. Oh, seen, okay. Seen the okay. art, but uh, uh, not my cup gotcha. of tea. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. I mean, I only care about sorcery personally, but <laughs> I know you're a gamer and you play a few games, so I wasn't yeah. sure. Um, but yeah. So, like, my point there is, if if it's um if it's an artwork that's being pushed to Arthurian Legends, but it was printed as a sample card, that's actually pretty crazy and cool because those are going to be like the only Arthurian Legends cards that have sample cards. Again, assuming that they're not going to distribute sample cards again in the future and i think um i want to say like simon might have actually uh, confirmed that in discord he was like the the company really wants alpha to be the premium collectible you know like the, the mainstream and then beta and then the future sets like samples are like a niche and um people are into because they're very rare or like early adopters love it because it's really cool to see the early development printed on a card and then mm -hmm. see it in alpha so dramatically different um, but it's not supposed to be, you know, the comp it's from the company's perspective. It's not look the chase it, alpha is going to be the chase and the foils in there and the curios and things like that. But yeah, it's just cool. There's going to be like a handful, I don't know, maybe like a dozen or so outliers that are not an alpha that then show up in Arthurian legends that had sample cards printed in the past yeah. year or so. So, so that's one, you know, they said that this is not going to be an alpha. So it's kind of cool. All right. Well, so let's, um, player, if you want to go back yeah. to the ball, just really quick oh, yeah. as a player. So, you know, playing with <laughs> that, that card, um, it, it, the mechanic of it, ultimately you were exchanging the ball of lightning to allow it to hit the next minion. So ultimately this, this card can be an, an absolute board wiper, uh, in the realm. So I think that's why they, they took it out. Um, that's mm. in my opinion. But uh, it was very, very, uh, <laughs> it was uh, 
it was a menace of a card to that was being played. <laughs> yeah, it says you and an opponent take turns extending a path by choosing a new location. Yeah, it sounds like pure chaos. So how did how did that actually work? Like you choose the first hit and then your opponent gets to choose where it's redirected? Right, exactly. So you wow. you would shoot it from your spellcaster, it would deal uh what was it three damage, and then your your um the your opponent gets to choose where it hits next, and then you get to go and then keep going until you pretty much run out of all uh places it has visited. Damn, that's so. pretty epic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can recall like from my days playing Magic or Hearthstone and stuff, like an interplay like that between myself and opponent. Is that common have you seen that in other games i haven't really said that's kind of new to me so and yeah. that's why it's, it's really cool it's different and and yeah. that's what i love about this game man it's it's so just mm. it, not only because of the artwork but like just all these little scenarios and it's very strategic when you actually dive into this game um it's i would say it's very three-dimensional like you're playing like three-dimension chess man um mm. and it's just it's just an absolute blast it's like it's a completely different game I've, than I've ever played before, and I'm I'll go on the uh, on the hill and die on this hill. It's not even out yet, and I've played a lot of card games, man. But this is my yeah. favorite, by far, my favorite, and I absolutely love it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's important because like a lot of people, you know, a lot of cynics were like, "This is a, the the worst." Cynics were saying things like, "This is a um, NFT project," <laughs> you know, because it's like all they talk about is the art. The art's amazing. It's all like the community talks about, and it's an NFT because it's not out in print form yet. So that's kind of a joke. Once it's out, it becomes like a printed product. But they thought it was all about the art and the gameplay itself didn't have a lot of substance. But so it's cool hearing from a guy like you that's played not only this game a lot but other TCGs. And by comparison, this is your favorite. Um, oh yeah, that says a lot. Yeah. The, and, grid, and just, the grid opens a whole new world of possibilities too. It's, the, it's the, a lot of fun. The, the grid is amazing. Yeah. And what I, and I want to give kudos to uh, Eric and his team, the sorcery team, Ember Leaf, um, uh, um, Scary Biscuits. I mean, the, the, there's they've got a whole crew, but um, I applaud them because, you know, they have took the time to listen to the community and, and actually allow play testing. So th to me, this has kind of been a community driven game. And um, and that's what I absolutely love about it. Um, it yeah, it, it's just it's just it's it's so much fun. So I just I just want to applaud Eric and his team because they're doing a fantastic job. So good yeah, job, guys, keep it yeah, up. It was it was <laughs> fun. It is nice when you get community feedback because you feel like a part of the project, like even early on, maybe I don't know how, how long ago did you did you hear about the game and start getting involved in it? I got I in. I got involved in. I think it was when the Kickstarter go off. Was it May? March. 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 Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah. I right. I got involved right when you had the early bird um, purchase the packs, or if you if you get a sample pack, if you were you know if you backed it on this oh. day. So that that's that's when I started. So right. Okay. I guess right when the uh, the the launch of the Kickstarter happened, I was kind of in yeah. there. So. All right, so you've been around a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think they stood up the Discord in like I want to say August 2021, and then um, within like a couple weeks of that, I was fortunate. This guy uh, David Batten, who runs a Flesh and Blood art house, you might know him since you're a Flesh and Blood guy, mm -hmm. right? Um, he's, he's like, you got to check out this game. The art's sick. Yeah, he know he knows like I was into art, you know. And then I started looking into it and saw that all these Magic the Gathering Alpha artists were commissioned right. to do work for it. So I was like immediately like super into it. Jeff Menges, Melissa Benson, uh, Drew Tucker, like all these iconic artists. Um, so I was really excited. I want to start interviewing them and stuff. So I, I was like in the Discord very early. I think, like I say, I was stood up, I want to say sometime in August and I joined maybe early September. Um, so it was really small at that time. And like what was cool is Eric was super active early on. So you joined like when it was pure chaos because the uh, Kickstarter was popping off. And, mm -hmm. and then after that, like between just Eric and the team being slammed and then like Simon kind of like keeping them under control with not leaking too much. He started like right. phasing out of discord a bit, <laughs> but like really early on in um, fall of 2021, Eric was very active in there and like we could ask him questions yep. and he was like soliciting feedback, as you say, from the community, even to the extent of um, I remember like at one time he was like, Hey, there's like these five cards, you know, he named, he had a few cards that needed some flavor text 
and he asked the community like for suggestions. So like David and myself, like we submitted a bunch. One of them he actually liked that I gave him and it landed on um, one of Severin's cards. So I was like super pumped. I was like, man, my my like <laughs> suggestion is going to be printed on this card for the game. And then I think they changed it later. I'm going to go try to dig it up. Um, but yeah, that's just another example. Like you're talking from a player perspective. They did a lot of testing, a lot of feedback and it evolved mm -hmm. because of that, which is sweet. Um, but even with like flavor text and things like that, people were given given um, feedback about like titles they liked or flavor text that could be used, which is just like, you know, flavor text is sometimes very relevant to the card in specific, or sometimes it's just fun and playful, you know, to, to make it funny or something. Right. So what was that? Let me find Severin's, uh, man, it was, a, it was, a, I was like, I, so I'm trying to remember I, if the flavor text was printed on a sample card and it was for sleep. So now it says breathe deep. The Gathering Bloom. Um, so the effect says target minion at a location up to two steps away falls asleep. It's disabled until it takes damage. Um, so like my idea was like something along the lines of be still until the pain awakens you, okay, which I thought yeah. was like pretty slick and epic sounding. So Eric was like, <laughs> I quite like that one. You know, sometimes he talks like kind of formal like that. Um, so he's like, I'm going to write that down. And then like he put like in one of the... Um, I have a version of it in digital like form, right? Like just a file because it was on the card and maybe it might've been in one of the early TTS updates. So I'll have to go dig it up, but I don't think it ever made it to print in the print file for the uh, sample cards, unfortunately. But, and I don't know, like ultimately, I think he did change the flavor text a lot, even some of the suggestions he got. So I don't know if it was more of like, uh, he was worried about creative license to it or something, you know, something like that. Right. Or he just, I don't know, maybe he just changed his mind, but it's kind of funny. All right, so back to the game here, in or out of alpha, right? So you go to sorcery cards. We got off on a wild tangent there. Yeah, sorry Unconfirmed about that. No, nah, it's on me. <laughs> so there were 32 cards that were like, I want to say most, if not all of these, were in the TTS update in September. But then like when the October uh, update came out, and again, that one is the one that like we think is pretty firm for alpha because they, mm -hmm. they started going to print very soon after that. So the cards were either final. They did caveat like anything is subject to change. Um, so we saw that with ball lightning, right? Like that was in that update, but then they ended up pulling it out of, out of alpha. Um, but these 32 were removed from TTS. There's like, I want to say there was, um, 365, 370 ish, um, cards or so that were in that latest TTS update. So we think those are in alpha and that leaves about 30 to 35 cards. If you have a set size of 400 to 405, roughly is what they're saying, right? So there's 32 omitted here. So we're going to play a game of like, do we think they'll be reintroduced and included in alpha? Or do we think this will be pushed to Arthurian legends or just some of them? Like, I know he commissioned some artwork that's not going to be used at all. So Eric, like uh, he has a lot of art, like artistic integrity, you know, like if mm -hmm. it's not resonating with the, if it's not tight enough to the mechanic he needs in the game or, you know, the art just doesn't work for him and for whatever reason, he didn't use it like because I talked to a lot of the artists, you know, in great detail. And they're like, it just comes to light over time. They're like, oh, you know, I did this painting or I find it like on their social media. And I was like, yo, what's the deal here? Like this is on a card <laughs> or it's like this looks like sorcery. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I did that one for Eric. And he's I don't know if he's going to use it or not, you know. <laughs> gotcha. Cool. So, anyway, we'll go through these one by one and see if we can uh, speculate. And, and like people that are following, if you want to type in the chat, if you think it's in or out, that'd be fun, too. But this one. This is up for auction right now, actually. It closes at 8 o'clock tonight, Blasted Oak. So there's a sample card of this card, but it's not in the latest TTS update. So I'll let you go first. What do you think on this one? Do you think it's going to be in alpha or pushed? Uh, I think it will be in alpha. Hmm. What makes you say that? Uh, just, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm speculating because of, like, Arthurian Legends and, and Beta. I'm just, you know, to me, with all the spells and just the artwork, Blasted Oak, nearby magic damage is reduced by one. Um, I I think it'll be in there. I, I, I just, it just, uh, I don't think it'd be a card that should be pushed. I, th I think it's a card that, that should be in the alpha set. Beautiful card, beautiful artwork. So, yeah, I'm going with <laughs> alpha, man. Send All right. In. Yeah. In some ways, a couple guys are saying Arthurian legends. So, let me, uh, let me feature them up here. Boom. Ah! Yeah, because he's, he's saying that's what it means so blasted oak al are you saying shovels are you saying it's in arthurian legends so that's what you think um or he's just telling the others what al means because that, that's an acronym we use and take for granted you know for people newer to the game arthurian legends al um so i think like 
I started looking into this one because I was, you know, running the auction for the sample card and I Googled it because like a lot of the cards in this game have a lot of um, cultural context and stuff. So I think that, um, you know, Eric, I don't know if Eric's like well read between him and Nick. They're just like, I don't know if they're pretty mature guys or well read or just have like a lot of life experience. I think Eric's like 42 or something like early 40s. Um, so am I. So we're pretty, pretty close in age. Um yeah, he's like a lot more cultured than I am, it seems, because like a lot of this stuff, I don't I don't know what it is. And I just went and started like researching it. And um, I discovered a ton, like trying to understand what's going behind going on behind the art. And this one, I when I looked it up, there's a there's a Merlin connection to this. Uh, it's Ooh. called Merlin's Oak. And there's like this oak tree that he sat under. And there was some prophecy where he said, like, if this oak tree ever fell or died or something, it would like flood the city. You know, some, something to that effect. So I'm saying Arthurian Legends on this one. Um, okay, well, I'm going to change my vote since you said that. So <laughs> Arthurian Legends. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I say. Um, let's see. All right. Yeah, so R Raphael's in there. He's um, I'm Relief in the Discord, yeah. so he's one of the mm -hmm. developers. So, yeah, I think he's saying he can't follow, but he's going <laughs> to he's gonna, he's gonna follow all he can. He's taking care of the kids. He's in uh, Brazil or something, you know. So it's, something else that's really cool about uh, sorcery, it's super like international. Like as these auctions are popping off, I'm shipping cards, paintings like all over the world, like everywhere imaginable. Germany, one, let me try to think of a few. Germany, France, Switzerland, um, China, Japan. There's people everywhere. And those are like some of the hardcore collectors too that yeah. are really like ponying up for samples or paintings. Canada is another one. Um, there's a lot yeah. in the US, you know, mm -hmm. but they're everywhere. Are you saying yeah, that, that like in yeah, gameplay? Yeah, I mean gameplay like uh like this morning. Shout out to the vile one. You know, he's from Ireland. Uh, oh so yeah, yeah, it's uh it's it's really cool uh, uh, to play on that's one of the cool things about TTS too, is you can play with people all around the world in the in the middle of your room. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, all right, Cerberus and Chains. What do you think on this one? A unique so unique demon on a short leash. Let me read the text really quick. Um, I, I've seen this played. I'm I. This is definitely an alpha. I don't I don't have the uh, the Arthurian legends vibe to it. So when I think of mm -hmm. Arthurian legends, like you said, Merlin, um, you know, uh, the King Arthur, um, Excalibur. So I, I just don't see Cerberus Cer uh, in chains in in that Arthurian legends uh, scheme. So I'm going with alpha. Yeah, I got to agree with you there. I can't think of any logical connection for Arthurian Legends here. So why do you think it was, um, as a game player, do you think it was pulled out because it needs some rebalance or uh, some improvement to the game mechanic? Uh, yeah, definitely. Either the mechanic pulled out. I, mean, I don't really know why on this one because, uh, yeah, honestly, I haven't really seen it played too often. So, hmm. you know, just like you said, uh, see, let's see. Can't move away from its summoning site unless it's unleashed by being teleported away. So, you know, ultimately, whatever, um, if you play this right now, whatever spot you put in in the realm on that grid space, it's stuck there until it's teleported. Um, so, you know, the yeah. interaction of the card, you can't really do anything with it. You can't move an attack with it. Uh, essentially, you can only just block. And, you know, why would someone go and I hit that spot if he's right there so um so I what, think what does it probably... mean to be how do you teleport something in the game what does that actually mean so there's a card and there's a couple of cards in the game there's like uh like blink um blink uh, i'm trying to go off memory here blink says you could teleport or move a minion uh to a nearby site and then you draw a card okay and now okay. an ally teleports to a location it's nearby draw a card so essentially, if it's on that grid space, and remember, nearby is is like the corners of it, or adjacent to the site. So then you can move yep. to any of those. Um, so like Ser Ser Serbius right there, that's the only way that it could move. Gotcha. Yeah. So that seems. I so I'm I'm gonna go with Alpha again and say it was pulled because it needs a uh, redesign. So mm -hmm. it seems like for one, it's a unique. You're not gonna draw it a lot. Secondly the um condition to actually make it useful is so it seems very narrow i'm assuming there's not a ton of teleport um mechanic cards right. out there so it has a dependency on something else that doesn't exist <laughs> in high frequency so 
that's probably why you don't see it in gameplay too, right? Mm -hmm. People aren't testing it because it's it's kind of useless and you can't have right. a unique card. Uniques are supposed to be mega powerful, and that's why you can only carry one in your deck, right? So yep. Yep, I'm going with redesign. Another um, little tidbit is that this was included in the collector tier. So um, someone, the guy, uh, uh, what's his name, Koyubi, out in, um, he's in Germany. He he got this artwork. Oh, um, he revealed it in the Discord, so I know who owns it. Uh, it looks awesome. like sick, too, the original painting. It's got like a different color tone um, when you see the original. But yeah, so I wonder how many are going to be like, given out through the collector tier and then not included in alpha that seems kind of strange to me <laughs> mm -hmm. so i think i think eric's got pressure to to make this one work is my guess all right let's go on chaos, oh, twister. chaos twister such an awesome beautiful card <laughs> yeah talk about how it works and then like what do you think in or out uh so exceptional so you could have three of them in your deck uh teleport each minion and relic on a nearby site to random locations I think the flavor just I'm just thinking of vision of Twister, man. Like, you know, <laughs> when a Twister comes through, unfortunately, it's gonna throw crap everywhere, right? You don't know where it's gonna go. Yep. Um, I think this is gonna be an alpha. And I really don't know why they took it out because it just seems like a fun card to play with. But so maybe they're reworking it for some reason or I, I really don't know why they took it out because it was a pretty cool card to play with. Um, yeah. So hmm. I, I don't know, but um, yeah. So like, like it says, you could teleport each minion relic on a nearby site to random locations. So it, you, you would use like a 20 sided or, you know, uh, a die to um, figure out where that, where those uh, relics and uh, minions would go. Uh, so are there still mechanics in a game to require a 20 side die? There is the headless okay. the headless haunt requires a twin inside die because at the start of your turn you have to well, it doesn't say roll but you you assign the uh, headless haunt to a random location and the only way to do that is use a twin inside to die. Hmm. All right, so it's you're saying it's functional, it's a good card, it's a flavorful card, so it probably didn't need a massive like design overhaul. So for those reasons, I'm going to say it's going to Arthurian Legends. Okay. <laughs> and also, like art wise, you got this knight like being tossed. Right. You got this like horse, right? So cavalry back mm -hmm. in Arthurian Legend. Yeah, there we go. I, right. I think it could work, you know. Yep. <laughs> so I'll say AL on that one. <laughs> and that's what Shovels is saying AL too in the in the chat. All right, Crown of the Victor. Another oh, unique. Man. Damn, there's a lot of uniques that were pulled, I noticed. We'll see that as we go. But this yeah, what card, do you think of this one? This card was absolutely bonkers when we were <laughs> play testing it. I loved it. Um, <laughs> but when I was looking at the so our theory and legends here, looking at the crown, you know, King Arthur, I think in that aspect, that's why it's gonna be an Arthurian Legends. It'll be an AL. Okay. A unique relic for a champion triumphant. Yeah. I think it's pretty fitting, obviously. You know, a crown. Only minions that killed an enemy this turn may may acquire a crown of the victor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you there. I'd say AL on that one. All right, what's next? Crusade. Oh, Crusade. So this one, this is like a two-piece artwork. And I, I always forget. I think um, this is by Truett, Truett Parish, Yeah, with Jihad. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, so they came out with the playmat. This was one of the ones you could add in, in backer kit. Or you could buy it, you know, with the Kickstarter. And then backer kit's like a period that follows after Kickstarter. And you could buy more if you wanted to. I kicked um, myself because I didn't pick up one you get of those. It? Yeah, me too, man. <laughs> I think, that, was this the one that Rudy leaked? It was like in the background. I was like, I, I think so. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty sick. And um, so, like, in that Kickstarter, uh, or in that play map, he has the crusade artwork and the jihad like facing each other side by side mm -hmm. and it makes it look like it's one painting. So I think I asked, um, Truett about this and he, I, I'm pretty sure he told me that it's actually two different paintings. Um, and it's kind of cool, like how it just fits so well that you can merge it onto a singular play mat like that. So just a little, yeah, this guy, it's almost someone in chat picked the play mat. That's awesome. I'm, <laughs> I'm I, jealous. I, I regret it. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, right, but so that, that, that unique, part that card is definitely that screams that screams Arthurian legend vibes all day long. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, absolutely. just like the cavalry, the knight, you're, you're going on a crusade. Um, so definitely Arthurian legends. Yeah, slam dunk. You know, like there might be a sliver of a doubt because it was an alpha offered playmat, so it's kind of interesting. But it's then not an alpha. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, 
Yeah, I think um, that's another sign of like how uh, Eric is just true to his vision and doesn't compromise on it. So even though, yeah, maybe it's not ideal if the card's not in there, if the artwork's not in alpha um, and he and he sold playmats for it. But I don't think he's going to compromise if it's a better fit for um, Arthurian Legends. And I know like talking with the artist, he um, like I said earlier, he didn't compromise on art at all. He made some some of these guys repaint paintings entirely. Mm -hmm. So like a couple examples, Andrea Modesti, when his um this would be another little tangent, but I think it's people might find it interesting. So if I go look at Andrea's cards, um, Andrea Modesti, right? So this, this came up in the interview with him, but he did a few of the basic lands here, you know, like rustic, rustic village, simple village step. Um, so I know like for certain, at least these two rustic village and simple village, he had done these in like portrait, um, view like more vertical like this right okay and then eric was like I, i'm gonna use this as an atlas site you know so i think it would work better as a landscape um painting so he had the, he went and repainted it um which is pretty sweet you know so he has both and then um i think i yeah so he, he shared some of those images and it came up in in my interview with him and then brian smith another artist um who did uh this is his first ever tcg project he, I think um, he's knocking out of the ballpark, man. Those scream yeah. like uh, I haven't read to be honest, I haven't read that, uh, all of your interviews, but those scream like metal art like vibes, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> I love it. You know what? Like, I don't know if he's done album covers, but he's just like he sells his artwork on his social media. I think I I know he sells it on through Facebook. He has like a big following through there. I think he's also on Instagram. And people mm -hmm. just he just paints what he wants too. He's not he's not used to commissions. So this was like a whole new thing for him. And he didn't, um, he didn't like most of the artists would do a sketch. I talked about earlier how they had a template that showed like where the box would fall here and up here. Right. Um, and then they, they know like how to design their composition to fit that. And if they want to hide things here, great. Or if they want to have some negative space that didn't fundamentally change their, their design concept, they would do that. So he wouldn't sketch at all. He would just start painting. <laughs> and I don't know if he, I think he ignored the template or didn't have the template, but like, he would just said like Eric put him through the ringer and like he would spend a month like painting up this or doing a painting and he'd be like, nah, you know, it's not going to work. He's sorry. <laughs> I got it. Let's, let's change it like this. Right. And he'd give him like some new direction. He had to completely repaint and like maybe take another month to start from scratch or, or well, maybe you sometimes were... he could salvage it, but sometimes he had to start over. <laughs> like the big one was like the devil's egg. Right. And he definitely like oh, yeah. do a lot of, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, I want to show one example. I did, um, one of the guys in my Patreon discord, um, he's in both. He, uh, asked for a behind the art. Let me go to the behind the art. Cause it's kind of a funny story that then hammers this point home. Um, trying to remember. it was one of the more recent ones that I did. So it's probably near the bottom. Yeah. Whirling blades. So take a look at this. This was, um, yeah, this is a sick artwork. So he, he painted this, and then <laughs> you see what he had to do here? Like, I don't know. Let me see if I could blow that up. All right. So this was the original painting and then it wasn't like large enough vertically. So he oh, had yeah. to go like take this other, he paints on like wood board sometimes, mm -hmm. or maybe all the time. I'm not sure if that's his standard medium, but he had to go like add a piece to the top and then like extend this painting vertically. And then when it goes to print on the card, you would never know that, right? Like this is the final and it looks great. Um, actually you see it's truncated here, right? Mm -hmm. So like, I don't know if I, did I have a picture of the actual card? This, so this is the final painting. Um, so I think like the original painting gets truncated here, but then to fit the card and extend through the card title without chopping off this guy's face, he had to go add this, he had to go paint this and then digitally merge it to print onto the card. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like an extreme. That's, this is what happens when you don't sketch first, or you don't, uh, right? You know, do it within the the template. <laughs> so that's pretty hilarious. All right, so back to um, unconfirmed for alpha, right? All right, so we're on crusade. We both agree, Ethereum legends. We're at Dome of o Osiris, a unique site. There's so many uniques that were pulled. It's very interesting. Man, okay, so Dome <laughs> of Osiris, nearby sites lose all abilities. They still provide mana. And which is really cool mechanic. Um, I don't know anything about Osiris, about, you know, like in Arthurian Legends, like in that that kind of um, uh, 
theme. So I'm thinking dome. That seems screams more magic like uh, to me. So I'm going with an alpha man. Okay. Yeah, unique site of worship and contemplation. Nearby sites lose all abilities. They still provide mana and threshold. I can't call it like I. Th I want to say, um, you know, Vinco in uh, Discord. Vincent, mm -hmm. he lives in yep. France. Um, a while back, I think it was him. He was speculating that this might be in Arthurian legends. Um, oh man, I'm gonna sound like an idiot on this. What is the? Uh, are you are you well versed in Arthurian legends? Like the town? Is it um, Shamalan or something like that that they're from? Uh that uh, Arthur's from, he thought maybe that's what this was. And I think uh, he and I, I, I want to say both asked Vincent Pompetti, the artist on this one. And he, like the artists don't always know like exactly where it's going to land. Right. Um, they want it to be an alpha so they could sell their painting. But I think like people aren't discriminating. They'll buy Arthurian legends paintings, right? Camelot. Yeah. Thanks. Camelot. Nice. There we go. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a moron. I just like, I got too much stuff swirling around in my brain, but um. Yeah, Camelot. He thought this might be Camelot. And we asked Vincent, and he was, I think he was just like coyly said, like, maybe, <laughs> yeah. you know, so we don't know. But uh, it doesn't exactly look like Cam Camelot. It looks like a little more surreal to me or, you know, sur surrealism art. But I don't know. It could be. I can't call it. I'm going to say, um, hmm, I'll say Alpha. I'm yeah, because it doesn't, it myself. doesn't look like, it doesn't look like Camelot to me, personally. All right. Um, all right. Ooh, too much Eric's good art. Can't blame him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eric's curioso, man. Oh, dude. What do you think? <laughs> oh, man. It, this at <clears throat> Staple just being Eric's curiosa. Um, I think there's, I think there was some rumblings like on the Kickstarter page that I think this is the actual first, maybe a curios card. Um, but yeah. uh, I'm, I'm definitely going alpha, man. Uh, that screams alpha all day long to me. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how you don't include like the the company name, right? <laughs> like the namesake <laughs> of the company. It's got to be an alpha. That's it's interesting. For sure. I, I don't know. It's probably pulled out. Do you think they're like redesigning the card? Is this does this card work well um, from a gameplay perspective? Because it was in I, the pre-con sample decks. Yeah, it's no, interesting, I've, but it's I've, out. I've seen it played a few times on on Tabletop Simulator. Uh, let's yeah. read it really quick. Contra on a on a corner site, at least two steps away from all avatars. Uh, and then when an avatar picks up Eric's Curiosa, sacrifice it and draw three cards. So, I mean, mechanic wise, like I, like I said earlier is, you know, card draws the name of the game in this, in, in, in this game, I believe in my mm -hmm. opinion. Um, mm -hmm. so I don't know a redesign. I don't know why. Uh, I, I just don't know why it's not in there. I don't have the answers. I wish I did, but, um. Yeah, I don't know, but that it's definitely going alpha. A hundred percent. I'll die on that hill. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about like conjure on a corner site? What do they what do you think they mean by corner site there? Is that gonna be confusing the players or is that pretty clear cut? So, no, it's clear cut. So there's another card, another site that or this is a this is a magic card that you or it's actually an artifact. Um mm -hmm. and then there's a site card that you can play, which is cornerstone. They, but you have to play it on your corners of your uh, of the side of your board. Um, so, but uh -huh. I think it's clear cut. So you have to play it in one of the four corners of the realm. Oh, okay. So that yeah, maybe that's is that too limiting for this card, or do you think it it works pretty well as as designed? I, I think it works pretty well as designed. The only problem is is that a lot of avatars don't really move on the grid. Usually, they they play mm -hmm. from the one spot. Um, so, you know, trying to have this thing fire off because it says when an avatar picks up Eric's curious to sacrifice it. So you have to pick it up with the, with an avatar. Gotcha. So maybe they're hmm. redesigning it to where you don't have to pick it up with an avatar. You can pick it up with a minion. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So shovels and rope here says he think he thinks they want to make it slightly better. So yeah, maybe mm -hmm. it's, I think some of these are just too limiting. Like that example we said earlier with the teleport, it's right. just too restrictive. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think like, speaking of that, remember predestination has not been in TTS at all. And that is like a wild effect. Like you control random outcomes, but yeah. when Eric revealed that in discord, and I don't know if you were on board in the discord, like when that, that might've, I think that might've been before Kickstarter. Um, so you might not remember when he revealed it in discord, but he said like, this might be the most restricted, like, um, what was the word he used? 
like limited it had the, the most limited use case in the mm-hmm. game you know because there, there aren't enough other synergistic cards with it just yet but right. it's such it is a pretty i think that's going to be an alpha some of the guys think it's not i just i just think it's one of those like iconic artworks that you have to have in the initial release oh, for and sure. they're and it's out because they're redesigning it is what i would say but Anyway, Eric's Curioso, it's got to be in there. <laughs> you can't, you can't, I mean, unless he's going to change the name of it. But, and then, like, at your point about the Curio, they kind of teased that this could, this sketch card could be a Curio. I don't know um, if we could bank on that. Like, part of me makes me think that they were saying that maybe sketches, there could be sketch cards that are Curios. I'm not sure that we can bank on it 100% that there will be a sketch card of this specific card, but right. it's certainly possible. Yeah, it, 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 may, it would make sense, honestly. <laughs> They've been very tight-lipped on the on the Curio card, so yeah. uh, it's, yep. it's, it's fun to speculate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I'm saying that's in. Ooh, oh, great old... Dude, this man. is like one of my favorite Seagrave artworks. Unbelievable. I think Charles this... bought this. The guy in... Uh, in my Facebook group, he bought a ton so, of Seagrave artworks. I'm so jealous. It, the artwork's beautiful. This is hands down probably one of my favorite <clears throat> cards to play. You know when it, when we were able to play with it. Um, just looking at the card artwork artwork wise. Okay, so you got the ship right there. You know that screams like King Arthur. You know you know going on a voyage, going somewhere. I, I think this is going to be an Arthurian Legends. I really wanted to be an Alpha, uh, but I think that screams Arthurian Legends all day long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Indestructible Submerge. The first time Great Old One services flood the entire realm permanently. Yeah. It's what 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 do you think about the um casting costs on this one? Is that like so it's late game, obviously. So, is yeah. that too is that too much? It's it's Nine? it's not too much because here's the thing. You have these great thing which I you know, I, I I've I've dubbed or I'm pretty sure I I'm saying I dubbed it, but the uh the Alchemy Nine. So your mixes, your philosopher stone, your gems. So you're able to have those mixes in, in those gems in your in your deck. Uh, you could crack those, and you could definitely pop off nine mana real quick. Um, okay. But <laughs> if you look at the power level on the twelve, that's just mm-hmm. nuts, man. And then just how it says it 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 permanently submerges all other minions. It's a board wiper. Yeah. It's crazy. It's it's a crazy card. Yeah. So that makes me think maybe I it think needs it's a OP. It needs, it needs, it needs, <laughs> yeah. it a, you need to bring that power level down. I think a bit of a so. redesign. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with the, with the ship, I think it could be fitting of a Thurian Legends. Uh, uh, the thing is, though, it just looks. It's just such an iconic looking artwork that uh, it is. I think I it would be an a nice inclusion. Yeah. I want it to be an alpha, <laughs> but I want to say 50 50 on this one. You know, I can't mm-hmm. call it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Grim Reaper. Yeah, another oh, one. So this man. was in the collector tier. You know, he gave away this artwork in the collector tier pledge. Um, and it's another unique they're they're screwing around with. So what do you think? Grim Reaper. So it's a unique. Um, let's see. Enters the realm at a random location. There's that, that random thing. Um, yeah. And it shares location with any other minions. Kill one. Shuffle Grim Reaper. Uh, I, I don't see what's wrong with this card i don't know why it's not in i want i think it's i think it's alpha i think it's gonna be in the alpha set yeah so it's modest casting cost so this is a it's a spirit so it's a minion it has no how does zero health work is this a minion that has zero health how does that make sense it's, it's zero health um and it's indestructible it has void walk uh and the keyword right there is the indestructible yeah. Um, so it enters the realm on a random location. So you have to roll a twenty sided die. It, sh- uh, it shares a location with any other minions. Kill one and shuffle Grim Reaper. So ultimately, wherever oh. that Grim Reaper yeah. is, gonna- just think of like Grim Reaper, Death Touch man. He gets yeah. You and then, uh, That's yeah. sick, dude. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So it comes in, kills somebody. I guess the the part I didn't read it all the way through. It goes back into your spell book, so it's not like just sitting in the realm useless with right. no no attack ability. So it just comes and poaches people. And it's, it's that is sick. It's, it's just, gotta be it's gotta be Arthurian legends, I say. Because it's all about Arthurian combat. Legends? It's all yeah. about like warring and battle and epic. Yeah. I don't know though, because then you got like let's look at um let's look at Tony Sudo's artwork really quick here. Cause I think um I, maybe I'm just biasing based on his uh some of our his artistic choices, but you know, we did a um 
a long time ago. Again, it might have been before you're on board and you're on the you're in a Facebook group, so you might have seen mm-hmm. it. But he did a giveaway because like Tony likes to hide a lot of Easter eggs in his artwork. And the reason oh, he does yes. that, yeah, he wants people to look very closely. It mm-hmm. forces them to look closely at his art and appreciate it. So it's a pretty ingenious concept. But within here, and I'm not gonna be able to zoom enough to really call attention to it, probably, but in about four different places, he hides a grim reaper ah. in his artwork. And that's kind of like a fairly common thing. I think I don't know if he's like into Reapers. I know he's done that as like um what does he call it? Like when he does a special print, sometimes he'll he'll do like a little Reaper um drawing on there next to his signature. Um so anyway, I don't know. There's like this Reaper theme permeating throughout and <laughs> it would be fitting, but that might just be a Tony thing. I don't know if it's an Eric thing, you know? Right. <laughs> I don't know if we could tip its hand, but yeah, it's a pretty sick effect. I can see it working for either. It, it's um, very it's it's such a random effect and then maybe that's why they're probably gonna you know maybe tweak it to make it like a like shovel and rope said make it more playable um because gotcha. i mean it's, it's it's just so random yeah i think they wanted to make it playable yep so it's yeah it's kind of broken so yeah i mean that that could be an argument to fix it and and reintroduce it all right, so let's go back, or let's go now to the gross poltergeist. Another sick artwork by Brian yeah, Smith. So good. <clears throat> uh, stealth Curable relics on nearby site becomes minions under your control with power equal to their mana cost. Um, I'm saying, number one, this is going to be alpha. Uh, but I think they are re- reworking it to make it more playable because... Not a lot of artifacts are are conjured into the realm. You don't see a lot yeah. of in in my experience of playing the game. I mean, there are artifacts that are played, but there's not an abundance of them. Yeah, yeah, I agree. They got to expand the use case. I can't um, dream up a reason why this would make sense in an mm-hmm. Arthurian Legends theme. So that one seems pretty clear cut to me. Yep, rework for Alpha. All right. Oh, the Highland Princess, man. I, I I, like, I almost bought this painting and I hate myself for not doing it. <laughs> and then someone showed it in Discord and I was like, God damn it. Like, I need that. <laughs> what was I thinking? But yeah. So what do you think? A unique mortal. So this screams Arthurian legends all day long. I mean, princess. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I would like to see it in alpha. Um, there, but here's the thing. There is not a lot of cards in the set right now that are playable that has charge. I think there's only three total cards that have mm. charge. Um, yep. So I think they might be integrating more charge cards in Arthurian Legend. Like I said, this is all speculation. Not on yeah. part of the team. Don't know. Just player. Um, but, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, that this card screams Arthurian Legends all day long. Um, yeah. I mean, so I, are there any cards that are were confirmed for Alpha that have charge still? To your uh so the I think the Calvary's still in, right? The um the Trojan Calvary by Andrea yeah, Modesti. Um or... it's a fire card. Uh the, I know there's two that are that are playable right now. The fire um, spell. Let's see if we can do yeah, it real fire. quick. Fire spells. <clears throat> All right. So it's a cavalry. Oh yeah, the Petrosian yeah, yeah, Calvary. Yeah, yeah, yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Andrea Modesti. Yeah, that's charge. All right. So the charge mechanic we believe is in. There's an, probably, I guess, enough of it. Um, but you, that is a, a specific um, synergy that's required on that one. Is that what you're saying? No, no. There's so char- a- charge is the equivalent to, uh, and I hate bringing up Magic the Gathering, but I mean, a lot of people, that's, that's what cool. their game is. So um, <laughs> yeah. Magic Gathering has uh, um, haste, which you can attack on that turn. Mm. So yep. Highland Princess, I think, is just is just if you okay so here's the thing they they're not going to put this in because they need to rework the power level it's it's too op mm. because allies here have charge so if this is out and then you could pump out a lot of like weenie creatures like one ones two twos with haste yeah um or charge <laughs> oh my gosh it's just yeah yeah, I mean that that's a common like in Hearthstone, that's a pretty common archetype, right? I think they also I want to say they, they might also have a charge mechanic where you can attack right away and then that's mm-hmm. like a, a aggro deck is you know what they say. 
And and um, the crazy thing about this card too, which reads <laughs> at the end of your turn, untap other nearby allies. Yeah. So you could untap so you because when you when you when you charge or when you hit a card, you have to tap it. Um mm-hmm. and so then essentially if it's tapped, you know it can't it can't block. Well at the end of the turn, if this is out, you can untap your allies and you know, you got blockers. It's just uh it's just yeah. an awesome card that's just OP yeah. right now. <laughs> OP. Yeah, it is a unique, so you can only carry one, so you're mm-hmm. not gonna get it in every game, uh, potentially. But yeah, the, what gives me pause on this one is that they, I think they need royalty in the alpha set, right? So you got it, it, and I'm with you. Like this makes perfect sense thematically for Ethereum Legends, right? But then, like, how do you have cards like Liz Danforth's um, Royal Bodyguard? Royal right? Bodyguard needs to, needs to protect yep. royalty. You know, mm-hmm. let's let's go dig it up real quick. Um, an elite mortal of steadfast loyalty. If a nearby avatar or royalty, king, queen, prince, or princess, so you got to have one of those in the game for this to make right. any sense at all, would take damage. Royal bodyguard may take that damage instead. So this makes me think it's alpha because there's only one princess, right? The Highland right. princess. Just um, one princess. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you got to revise this one, or that's going to be an awkward mess. Yeah. <laughs> nope. You know, I, no, but, I agree with you. Yeah. And then in addition. Is this synergistic with Sublo's um, King of the Realm? You know, that's another royalty. He's king, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, the Royal Bodyguard is definitely, uh, yeah. So you got the, the Royal Bodyguard is, yeah. So a unique mortal. So is he, it's a mortal though, but it's a king, right? So that that works with Royal Bodyguard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I don't know. I think it needs a princess. What's Shovel saying here? You have a king. A prince and two queens already in alpha. But what about the princess? You got to have a uh, royal bodyguard needs to protect a princess, <laughs> not a queen. What are the two queens he's talking no, about? The, the one queen is only queen at the Midland. The other one is the one that's already out. I don't think you've got to it yet. Um, it's okay. a, a, a Frazetta, a oh. Frank Frazetta um, card. Let me see. Yeah, and the Frazetta ones have been in and out. So let's see if it's, we got the death dealer. Yeah, it might have been previewed, but it wasn't in the later. Oh, Egyptian Queen is what he's saying. The Egyptian Queen, that's it. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, we saw that previewed, but it, it's not in the play simulator. So some we know are in and out. Again, like, let me go back here. There's 32 cards um, in this set. There's actually 33, but I said earlier, if some of you guys just joined recently, this um, ball, ball lightning is definitely out of alpha is what the company said. So 32 cards. Um, there's some that we just we're pretty certain have to be in there. Like some of the Frazetta ones that were removed. I think Simon like said in discord that all of the Frazetta cards are in that we've seen so far. So 32, we think there's like 35 ish omitted. We don't think all of these are in there, but if you took those 32 plus like the, let's say three or four Frazetta cards, you're at 35, 36 already. So some are in, some are not. Um, But uh, that just, that I guess what that says is some of these are definitely not in alpha because you just have too many. Right? right, they gotta go. <laughs> there you go, ruler of Thol. Like I gotta. Well, Simon said that's in, so we know that's in. But yeah, um, the Egyptian right. queen's not even out. I don't think it. I I don't even see it anymore. Is that just a? Uh, it's not in simulator. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. So. Yeah, but I think the the Frazettas are in. I think is what I, Simon had said in in Discord a while ago. All right, infiltrate. This was um one of my very favorite artworks from L. L I. I I'm assuming she pronounces Elvira Palakowski. Um, but yeah, what do you look think? at her architectural just draw. Man, <laughs> she, you know I'm a fan because Mariner's Curse is my uh, my yeah. card, man. So I know she does that. But uh, uh, infiltrate an allied minion moves to an enemy avatar and gains stealth. Um, uh, I'm going Arthurian Legends. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think I think so too. I think it's just fitting thematically. Of Arthurian legends, I could totally see that. Um, but yeah, she does. Uh, she does a lot of like architectural, architectural um, concept artwork, paintings, and things. Mm-hmm. I know she had a Kickstarter that some of the guys bought into recently, and had some cool stuff like along those lines. But yeah, so that's cool how she wove that in, and like a lot of her pieces in sorcery have that. But yeah, I could see her like this this uh, lady raiding a party. <laughs> yeah, uh, Arthurian legends like a party of royalty, and maybe there's also like a sabotage element yeah, uh, to Arthurian it. lore. You know, <laughs> like you see right. it in the card, but like in Arthurian legends lore, um, there's like 
you know, a sabotage theme within mm-hmm. Arthur's family, you know? So I think they'll, they'll make that fit the theme. And I think, right. uh, and I think, and just reading the card itself an allied minion moves to an avatar and gains stealth. That's mm-hmm. just overpowered because it doesn't specify nearby. It doesn't specify anything. It's a magic spell. So you can move any minion to a, uh, a, a to the uh, enemy avatar and just, you know, do deal a final death blow. So I think they've got to re re retwork that. Um, yeah. Rework it. And I think they might use like a uh, keywords, like a uh, adjacent or nearby. Mm-hmm. Okay. So maybe a redesign and mm-hmm. maybe interrupt. Oh, Jihad. So we talked about this one already with crusade. Yep. So we'll skip that one. Yeah. That's, that's sick artwork. He he must have like had the concept in his mind that these two would kind of work complementary to each other if they were done separately. But all right, Kingdom of Agartha and Adam Burke. He only has like four or five paintings. I want to say that he's done so far, but I've heard he's painting for Arthurian Legends. Okay, um, so he's been commissioned again, which is cool because a lot of he's a, he's a pretty popular artist. A lot of a lot of people like um, End of the World. I think it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a pretty sick one, but yeah, I, this is actually my favorite uh, artwork from him. Oh, yeah, what do you piece. think about this one? Unique site, yeah. Uh, unique site. Uh, I think it just screams Arthurian legends because of kingdom, uh, mm-hmm. just the kingdom there. Uh, allied minions on and under nearby sites have burrowing. Um, I don't think it's it needs to be reworked. I just think it's just a card yeah. that's going to be an Arthurian legend. Yeah, I'm with you there. It fits thematically. Mm-hmm. So. I'm saying that one's out. Okay. Moon Clan. Oh, so man. a lot of guys in Discord Love complained. Love the Moon Clan. <laughs> yeah, the artwork is like one of the top most popular from Alan Pollock, but a lot of guys were complain, complaining, why why isn't an epic artwork like this have a more epic gameplay mechanic? Like this does nothing. It's just flavor text, right? So what are your thoughts on this one? I just... Uh... <laughs> there, someone also told me, I think it was too fluent, uh, Lewis, you know, in Discord, he thought um, he said in like one of the movies on Ethereal Legends or one of the there's different versions of the lore, you know, and it's all like hearsay. Some people think, you know, King Arthur never existed. Others are convinced he did. And it's kind of been debunked, I think, over the years. But he said in one of the versions, there's a werewolf. Um, so he thought it was Arthurian Legends for that reason. So I'm uh, a little sh- sh- biased shovels. to believe him on that. Yeah, Shovels is saying it's Alpha's confirmed. Confirmed. I'm going with Alpha. <laughs> Confirmed by who? Yeah, I didn't realize that. That's interesting. I don't know if he's saying he's confirming it or if that's official, but yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I never heard of like a werewolf in Arthurian lore, but you know, if, if I, I uh, believe I remember seeing something in the Discord and the rumblings, and we we're all talking about it that this card is also going to you're able to transform it as well. So, hmm. um, I think it's being okay. re- reworked for that mechanic of transform. Yeah, shape shifts to beast. So mm-hmm. it becomes um it's like a diff- beast is like a type of what do you call it in the game? It's like a there's like mortals, there's beasts. Yeah, uh, mortals, beasts, spirits, um okay. yeah, there's yep. All so that's what they mean. Things. Little shape shifts from one type to another. That's pretty that's pretty slick. Because there yeah, is a think... card that, that you can shape or that morphs, which is the uh the prince that you know uh and if if you have it's a frog and you can transform it to a to the prince, can't remember what the card's uh, the actual name of the card gotcha. is. Okay, yeah. So I I tend to say alpha as well here, and um, I think they're working on a little descriptor of what it actually does instead of just. I mean, in in a lot of games, there's like standard cards like this that are kind of like mid game type cards. They just have like a casting cost and like a modest power level and then and no special effect. But I think that's a rare outlier. I want to say in sorcery is that if you come across like many cards that have just flavor text and no, no, like no. additional mechanic. Mm-mm. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. So it's an odd outlier. I think it just needed more work is what I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. Alpha. Okay. All right. I like this game. This is a fun game, right? Here. I <laughs> yeah. this all day, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I was going to ask you, how are you doing on time? We're like, over oh, an I'm hour, fantastic. Hour I'm good, man. <laughs> all right, cool. Let's get through it. All right, near miss, Jeff Easley, the legendary Jeff Easley. It's been around forever. Great artist. Uh, So uh, here's one of those things that we're talking about. There's only one card in the game at the moment that utilizes the word quick in an instant, and that is dodge roll. Um, mm. So. 
Elite magic right. makes for a narrow escape. Quick, redirect the target of a spell or ability that would put an ally in harm's way to another unit near that ally. Um, I just think it's a rework. Uh, just looking, just because of the artwork, screams to me like Arthurian Legends because of, you know, like Merlin and all that stuff. So I'm just going with Arthurian Legends. I'm pretty sure yeah. it's an alpha, but I want it to be an Arthurian Legends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and and i think it's because they're rewarding the uh the quick aspect of the cards as well okay yeah i think those are a lot of compelling arguments for alpha and it seems to make sense for me so shovel says near miss future set when they decided on quick magic perhaps mm-hmm. yep so quick yeah that probably needs refinement okay i'll say Beautiful alpha card. and it's being reworked yeah it's a, it's an awesome artwork all right, Panorama Montecore. I think this is the only um, Melissa Benson artwork that has been, at least for the time being, omitted. Uh, so what do you think of this one? Uh, this screams to me Alpha reworked, and it's just a little overpowered. Even though the five mana costs and the, and the two fire threshold... Uh, the, the thing is, is when you have a 5-5 five, five in the game right now, it's very hard to kill a 5-5. Five, 5-5 five. Um, five, five, like, goes over that curve. Um, so, yeah. and it having airborne and being lethal, it's just, it's very OP. Very overpowered. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can't, I can't come up with a rationale for how it fits Arthurian Legends, so... I'll trust your word for it on the gameplay aspect. <laughs> depending, <laughs> depending Alpha on that one. Yep. All right. Plague of Frogs. Dude, these uh these frog artworks by Mikhail are like insanely underrated, I think. Like if I, oh. I'd love to see this painting in person because there's so much like detail. He actually just posted on his Facebook, like um, I don't know if he did it as like a New Year's thing. Like some a lot of the artists are posting like here's here's like my major works of 2022 and things like that. But he posted these images of these paintings he did. And he said, he, I was asking him, I was like, they looked like totally digital. I was like, there's no way you painted that. Come on. And he mm-hmm. was like, he, he worked the concept digitally and then he painted them. Um, and they look like amazing. And like the, the point being that like the detail and the color, like just like the it texture. Like is real frogs, man. Yeah. The texture <laughs> is like unreal. And the colors, I mean, he's an amazing artist. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, Plague of Frogs, another unique. So many uniques that have been pulled. <laughs> uh, definitely Alpha. I don't know why. Uh, I, I don't. I wish I had the answers. This is definitely screams Alpha to me. Uh, water needs this. Bring, bring back balance to water, man. Water is just not not good right <laughs> now. Um, yeah. And I love playing water, but uh, yeah, it says it's unique. Put a frog token into play on up to seven water sites so you essentially you could summon seven seven frog tokens mm. is, is there a token card with a frog artwork yep. Yep. okay mm-hmm. yeah so it makes total sense for alpha i'd say all right polymorph polymorph that's the card i was, th- was thinking of oh yeah. okay so yeah, yeah yeah so so transform a nearby mortal into a frog token when we're talking about the clansmen um, yeah, yep. or transform a nearby frog into a prince from your collection. Yeah. So literally it's wow. saying, if you have this card in your collection, the, <laughs> how I'm reading it, and it's just so flavorful, it's so cool, and you have a prince just lying around in your, your trade binder that's with you, you could polymorph and turn it into a prince, which is so <laughs> cool. Yeah. So, um, I, I this screams, uh, to me, I, uh, Arthurian legends. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's just it's interesting. Like, what are they doing with these royalty? You know, are they is it an alpha thing or is it an Arthurian legends thing? But I think more broadly than that, like when you look across all the alpha work, I think they're I think they're planting seeds for expansions. Right. You know, like yeah. a lot of that dark work artwork by Brian Smith and um, even Jeff Mengus has like a uh, a devil type of. Um, mm-hmm. You know that one devil card he has, packed with the devil. Uh, I think it's called with the devil. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think. Um, so there's been a lot of speculation. I think in one of those interviews, or it was one of the lives with Eric. That's how you you get him to leak stuff. You know, you try to hit him with a question and hope hope Simon's not keeping him under wraps. But he kind of said that like someone asked a question and he was like, oh, you know, like that sounds uh, 
surprisingly um, close to what we've been discussing behind the scenes with yep. themes, right? One was Ethereum Legends and the other was like either Angels and Demons or Heaven and Hell. And yeah. I think like that's one, you know, these these like royalty that's right. dovetailing right into our Ethereum Legends. So yeah, me and uh, me and uh, my buddy, uh, we play a lot, uh, Mike Pelly from the Discord channel. Yeah. We, we, yeah, we were guy. talking about it and, uh, um, you know, we're, um, we're also thinking like thinking of the, the Mana Core, right? You know, to uh-huh. me, my mind jumps into like Greek mythology. So I'm thinking, yeah. you know, there's yeah. some Greek, you know, some Greek mythology stuff that might be coming, some Egyptian stuff that might be coming. Um, so mm-hmm. and it's all speculation, which which is so cool. I, <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see like Viking art and stuff like that. I right, think Eric's probably into that. So mm-hmm. I, I would guess that's probably coming. Um, and he think I think he said like it was either in one of the lives or one of the um, interviews that was done is he likes these like thematic concepts from real life history and he surprised people haven't taken more advantage of that. So I think we'll no, see a lot sure. more. Yeah. But yeah, the artwork here, I like how this guy's got this like little gillet or whatever the hell you call it with a like a frog throat, <laughs> right? You know, like the frog has. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Like Francesca is like really creative. I love a lot of her art concepts. Mm-hmm. And it's cool because she's like a cartographer. She does like maps for all types of different games. But right. then she's like amazing at these other like other cards with other um, design concepts. She's just amazingly talented. <laughs> so, all right. So, Arthurian Legends on that one? Yeah. I get down I'm guessing what I'm going with. Oh man! So I saw this one, Drew Tucker, in person. This I went to the the show, right? Yeah, the IX yeah. Art Show in Reading, Pennsylvania. And if if anyone lives in the Northeast or you travel, you like to go to all these LGSs, right, man? You got to yeah, find a, a way to go to IX next year. Um, for sure. Like Drew Tucker's there. I think like every year. Jeff Mangas, both of those guys confirmed for this year as well. Margaret Oregon Keen was there. Alan Pollock, Jeff Easley. Um, I'm missing everybody. Anybody? I want to say there was like five sorcery artists. Um, and I think like most of them are regulars. They try to go every year. Um, so it's awesome. And like none of them had any sorcery stuff this year. So I was like, man, I'm going to go, I'll buy prints. I'll buy anything they have if it's sorcery related. Right. And they only had like their, they only had their magic stuff. Um, so I got a few odd end things, you know, I got some cool play mats from Jeff that he signed. Um, I had him sign, like, I found this magazine where he had his first ever published artwork in like one of those dungeon or is it dragon magazine? I want to say. Um, so I brought that, I had him sign that super nice guy, but yeah, Drew had this on display and like in person, this looks un- unbelievable. Um, it's a beautiful artwork. Uh, so anyway, primordial spring, an elite site of, of primeval, uh, bounty Genesis. If you control fewer sites than any opponent, draw three sites, draw three sites. Damn, that's sick. Yep, there's that, that that's powerful. Remember that 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 uh, <laughs> that aspect of drawing cards, man. Yeah. Um, I just uh, I I I don't see what's wrong with it. I don't know why it needs any kind of reworking. Um, usually you're on the same playing field. Maybe that's why on a land based site base. So gotcha. Maybe maybe they're reworking it to reward it somehow. Um, yeah. I it's pre I, to me it a spring. I want to say Arthurian legends. I don't know. Then my mind goes kind of like I'm looking at, you know, Camelot and all that stuff. So that looks like a nice Camelot kind of like vibe yeah. to me. So yeah, there's definitely like yeah. a heavy uh, nature element in Arthurian <laughs> lore um, that's fitting. So yeah, I, I tend to agree. I think that's Arthurian legends. I think I don't see anything like dramatically wrong with the card. That was the question I was going to ask you. Like, is it too narrow to have uh to expect to have fewer sites in your opponent where this card would be mostly dead in hand, but yeah, it, I mean, sounds it, like now. I, no, actually I think it is like a dead, dead in hand oh. card. I mean, because it, mm. like I said, you're, you're kind of like on an equal playing field when it comes to sites and land. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So maybe a tweak, but we both think Arthurian legends. For sure. Yeah. Super creative artwork there. Purge oh, juggernaut. Man, I missed this card. This card was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> One of his best artworks, in my opinion, too. Obviously. I love it. You know who owns the artwork on this? Is it Vinco? I know he was like super like interested in it. I don't know if he pulled the trigger. Man, can you say? Is it private or? Uh... I, I don't know. I'm just. Oh, you're asking I, me. If yeah, I'm, I'm asking. Not... Yeah. Oh, um. So like, I've talked to Brian a lot about. I'm trying to like get him to bring some to auction, but like he's stubbornly holding out on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like he he wants to wait because he he feels the demand like growing. You know, like some of the artists sold early. I mean, to be an artist, these these most a lot of these artists aren't like wealthy. 
you know, some of the magic ones, I mean, I don't think they're like super wealthy either. A lot of them sold their alpha magic stuff like right away for pennies because magic was nothing like early on. There's right. a lot of excitement and buzz like sorcery, but it's not like worth thousands or millions of dollars like the Black Lotus is today. Um, so they sold out, but they kind of learned from that experience. And now they're like, yeah, I'm just going to wait and see. And like, I'll sell after release because it's all, the, the buzz is only growing. You know, every time Eric leaks a, a new foil image or like something from a production line, like the community goes nuts and sample cards start popping off and, mm -hmm. you know, you can just feel, feel the vibe and energy. So I think like Brian um, is kind of like slow rolling it. I know he sold a few paintings, but he hasn't sold a lot. Like he's got a lot of them that he's just waiting um, and he might like start trickling them out or posting them for sale later on. So no, I want to say you. like he's gotten some offers, but to my knowledge, I don't think he sold this one. Yeah. Well, I guess, uh, <laughs> I guess I'm going to, shoot my offer then if it comes <laughs> fruition <laughs> yeah man yeah it's nice um but a, yeah, a juggernaut so, card and magic that's pretty similar um right. design concept yep. and i asked him he, he's he's not a tcg guy he's never heard of that card so i think that's pure coincidence yeah now that so. but the, just reading the the text on this card and just looking at the artwork it's just it fits so well um I believe this is going to be in, yeah, there you go. Solar Guard. Definitely God, Alpha. God, definitely Alpha. <laughs> it screams Alpha all day long. Um, yeah. I think they just have to retweak it just a tad uh, because it could definitely, uh, it will be very time consuming, but um, uh, it's definitely a board clear. So, yep. Yeah, so they could they could go ahead and change that as long as they don't change Ceaseless Slaughter. There you go, yeah. <laughs> that, that's one of those like, <laughs> glorious alliteration type things that is just like perfectly worded so i love that type line text but um yeah so this is one like i i don't really have an angle on i mean obviously it makes no sense for arthurian legends um and from your gameplay perspective i think alpha makes sense too mm -hmm. all right roots so this roots of uh well however the hell you say that word i think simon bought this painting you know oh, did he? I, I think he no said idea. that in discord at one point so like my bias was, you know, if if Simon bought it and he was a comp he's not with the company anymore, but at the time he was, did he have some bias knowing it's an alpha? Like, why would he buy a non-alpha painting? But you know, he doesn't control the development. That was he never did. That wasn't his uh, his his lane. So I don't know. What do you think from like gameplay or thematically how it fits? Uh, I mean, gameplay. I mean, if you read it, adjacent adjacent to all sites for movement um kind of op they've got to they've got to retweak that um so it's, it's definitely alpha for sure 100 percent. yeah adjacent to all sites for movement what does that actually mean adjacent to all sites for movement so How does that work? so your your minions can only move one site unless it's airborne they could they can move nearby so movement is a you, you can move to one one spot or one square on the grid adjacent from your site this is just saying it's adjacent to all sites it literally uh, it could just it can move anywhere okay yeah so it gives you more movement flexibility mm -hmm. that's yep. pretty powerful yeah and something did you notice before like there's these little people like walking on the roots no i didn't you see that you pointed it out yeah that's unbelievable <laughs> It's not like something I noticed, like I've seen a ton of sample cards at this point and like, there's so much stuff I discovered for the first time. And like, not many people look at the artwork as much as I do <laughs> and have studied it like for the past year plus. And like, I'm Ooh. still discovering stuff new all the time. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I was like, I was just reading shovels, uh, shovels, a uh, comment right there, which mm. yeah, there it goes. The yeah, Nordic mythology. That would be mm. freaking amazing, man. Yeah. I'm all for that. Let's go. That would be sick. <laughs> yeah. So maybe they're saving it for something like that. But I think like flavor wise and like how the title game mechanic and illustration always pair. This one is like super well done because you see these people mm -hmm. walking among the roots from all yep. different angles, you know, so that's perfect with that movement type uh, right. mechanic. Yeah. So that's pretty sweet. I, yeah. I don't know. I think um, I think you're right. Let's say uh, not alpha. Coming in the future, Arthurian legends or yeah. or the Nordic the Southern Nordic mythology Nordic expansion. Mythology, I like that. Let's go. <laughs> Let's hope so. Okay, that's unofficial, by the way. We're joking. All right, ruler of Thol, Frank Frazetta. Oh How do you exclude gosh. a Frazetta artwork? How can you? Uh, beautiful, beautiful card. Yeah. Um, this is this is. It's it's got to be alpha, hands down. I'm going. It's got to be alpha. It definitely needs to be tweaked. I've seen it played as is, and it's kind of OP. 
Um, so I think they've got to retweak it. So rule of thole and other allies can move as if the top and bottom edges of the realm were connected and other allies have plus one power while there. Um, so essentially if, if people have played with polar bears before, you can move um, from one side of the realm to the other. Uh, so essentially rule of thole is doing the same thing, but with, with your allies and giving you plus one okay. power. So yep. they might retweak it, shave down the, maybe the plus one power level. Um, but allowing your allies to move in the realm, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So shovels and solar god are both saying confirmed for alpha, and I think that's coming from Simon's comments in Discord. Yeah, but yeah, and like it makes you wonder their license agreement with Frazetta. Obviously, not an exclusive since Magic just jacked it, <laughs> used it for their uh, their secret lair or whatever. But um, yeah, I don't know what the like the the licensing terms are on that, like the duration wise. So maybe they need to get into alpha and they don't want to hold why, why would you hold why would you like sign a license agreement with them and then delay the art reveal so i right. think all it makes perfect sense that all frazettas are in it'll be interesting if more come in the future though that'd be mm -hmm. cool to see all right alpha shield wall man this oh, is man, uh, beautiful I, I love modesty i don't know what other people think of him as an artist but all of his are he's got are, a very very unique style and i i, yeah. I love it man it's fantastic mm -hmm. Uh, Arthurian legends, anything like you know, all of this is just screams Arthurian legends to me. Yep. Um, yeah, just uh, let me read the card really quick. And on an opponent's turn, prevent two damage that would be dealt to allies here. If there are less than two allies here at the end of your turn, uh, dispel should the wall. I don't really see anything wrong with it. Um, yeah. but it's just the artwork, the vibe, uh, screams Arthurian legends. So. Yep. Yeah, That's slam, slam dunk there. You know, Eric just said in Discord that Hunting Party is going to Arthurian Legends, and this nice. is like a classic combat scene that's perfect. So we know Andrea Modesti artworks in Arthurian Legends. This one would supplement it perfectly, so I think it's mm -hmm. a no-brainer. It's unfortunate, though. I would have... I wonder... I don't know if he sold this one. This is this is a sick artwork. I just love, like, how colorful it is. He, he works in watercolors. So a lot of his artwork is very like ornate looking, like the the uniforms that the soldiers are work, are wearing. The right. detail, the color, just it always looks so so beautiful. It's nice. All right, Spellblock, Drew Tucker. Oh baby, this is a nice artwork too. I love this one. <laughs> um. Yep. Uh. Let's see. Quick. Once again, here we go with the quick magics. Quick. Um. You know, we've seen these before. Now they're out. Uh. Quick. Counter a spell that puts a spell uh, uh, blocks caster in harm's way. Um, I I think it's alpha. I just or I don't know. I mean I don't know what they're doing with quick magic. I think they're reworking it. Uh, might be Ethereum Legends um, just because of that that reason because of the quick. I'm going with you know, Ethereum Legends. Okay. An elite repartee to Nyx intrusive magic. <laughs> The type line tax is always like money in this game. Yeah. But yeah, like all the counter spell cards, I th I think they've all been removed at one point. Or are, are there any that are in there that you can remember? It, like there's only know. there's only one which is dodge roll. Oh, okay. It's not even a, I mean it's a counter because it's it's you're countering the final death blow. So are there other like counter mechanic cards? I mean, that seems like a pretty I know it's a fundamental thing in magic. Like all the counter spells were pretty standard in the early days. Yep. So you think they're nope. pulling that out of sorcery? Interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm with you on that. Time stop. Oh, man. Ooh, man. <laughs> can't you can't take Severin art out of uh, there, out of any my set? Girl, man. <laughs> see I want all of her art in it, and then I want all new art in the future from her. <laughs> right. Hands down, one of my favorite artists. She's amazing. Yeah. Um, an elite That's aura cool. to trap you in the moment. Minions, relics, and other auras here are disabled and lose all abilities. At the end of each player's turn, put a time counter on time stop. It has twelve or more counters. Dispel it. Um, awesome mechanic. Uh, the yeah. mana cost on it is very high. Um, mm -hmm. and it's kind of OP where it says minions, relics, and other auras here are disabled and lose all abilities. It's kind of because uh, you know auras can can take up four squares as well. Oh. So, hmm. um, I don't know. I think this is just a rework. I think it's going to be an alpha. Yeah, 
Yeah, I tend to agree. I can't think of why it would be fitting for Arthurian Legends, and it's mm -hmm. it's kind of like a mouthful. Like you really got to think about what the hell this uh, <laughs> game mechanic is saying. <laughs> like, how does that actually work? Anything with like a counter too gets a little complex. I feel. Um, yeah. So maybe, ultimately, yeah. you would use like a you know like a twelve sided dice or something. Mm -hmm. um, it's aura you put in in a in an area of four squares, and then whatever's in those squares are disabled. And they lose all their abilities, and then at the end of your turn, you just start, you know, ticking down the uh, the aura, the time stop. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a beautifully designed card, though. So I hope they keep like the essence of it and the flavor. You know, at the end of each player's time, you put a time counter on it, so it's counting time. Mm -hmm. And if it is twelve or more, dispel it, so time stops. Time stops. It's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> and then like the the uh, type line text trap you in the moment. Yep. <laughs> so when it's dispelled you're trapped in the moment that's unbelievable design i love man. it yeah that's a that's a really nice one all right twist of oh, fate man I santiago caruso he's an amazing spanish artist you know he's only i think he's done maybe a handful of artworks we haven't seen many from him so i wonder if he's done more I mean, he's, he's got to be like crazy famous in his country because or maybe internationally because he has a massive following i've noticed on instagram and facebook mm -hmm. and stuff and when he does a live, it's like boom, hundreds of people every time. He he plays yeah. like he plays guitar and sings, <laughs> and like tons of people. I've I've followed it. Like I get the notification on Instagram, and I'm like boom, I got to see him sing again. <laughs> yeah. He's no. Good. Um. This this card is just. Uh, I I don't know why swap the locations of two avatars. Really, really, really. I mean, that's pretty powerful. I mean, yeah, that's pretty pretty powerful mechanic to swap Huge. your your avatars. Um, I really don't know. I'm, I want to say alpha, maybe it's rework. Maybe they just, I, I don't know. Maybe they're going to make the, uh, the mana curve, maybe a little bit higher, maybe higher mana. So maybe put it like a, an eight with three threshold. Um, cause it's a really strong mechanic to swap avatars. Um, so I'm going with alpha reworked, beautiful card. Yeah. You just recently, um, auctioned this card off, right? Yeah, the sample card. Yeah, yeah it, went, it went for like 500 bucks, which, yeah. uh, you know, some people think that's nuts, but like relative to other elites and uniques, that that was like very low in my opinion. And plus, like people think things that might not be an alpha are more valuable. So I think that one fell under the radar. And I know one yeah. of the guys in Discord was like, shit, I got distracted between family and work and uh, he was going to bid it up. So he's pissed. He missed it. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I'm, but, I'm in the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's an amazing artwork i love uh again trades faces and places you know the mm -hmm. pipeline tax is always spot on that's cool yeah i think it's being reworked for alpha oh is that like yeah. a hand like on the yeah. steering? i don't it's know spinning like, the, it's spinning yeah. the wheel because <laughs> it says nudge the wheel of fortune in your yeah, favor that's so, so cool yeah yep. that's a nice one i think it's in and i hope to see a lot more from santiago in the future he's a great artist there we go. Severin. So here we go. Again. Man. Ooh, beautiful card. Unravel, ordinary, destroy mm -hmm. all nearby relics, and banish all dead minions. Um, I think it's gonna be as you can see the sword and everything and all of that. I'm going our theory. Yeah. yeah, it's gotta be. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think so too, for that same reason. All right, Volts oh, of Oh my so this one, this is kind of what catapulted me. Just to be honest, to your channel, man. This oh, yeah? card right here. <laughs> yeah. Um, Volts of Zul. I kicked myself because I think you did a thing for um Tony for this card. And it like the original piece. Yeah, I and, sold uh, two of his originals. Yeah, I was kind of I, I was yeah. uh, considering and uh, that I kicked myself because I didn't bid on it. Yeah. Um beautiful card. I think it is this to me thematically, I think it's it's Arthurian Legends. Yeah, you know, I've talked to Tony about this one, and he swears that the funny thing about Tony is he'll say one thing, and then next time, sometimes I'll get a different story, or like he, he can't remember, or like so he, he he swears that Eric told him this is an alpha, and then I was trying to confirm because like like you say, like he had this one and um, uh, what was the a newly undine? They might have changed the name of it, but it's the one where his daughter's face is in yep. the wave. I don't know yep. if you knew that's his daughter. I wrote an article about that, but oh, Tony told me the story, but he sold like those two. He was like, Hey, 
I need some cash. Like, what do you think? Can we get these sold? And I was like, yeah, no problem. So I like floated it to the, the patrons, I think, and the Patreon supporters. Yep. And then um, they were bought like immediately, both of them. Um, so they didn't go to auction. I think just cause like he was in more of a hurry, he probably would have done much better at auction, but, um, mm-hmm. yeah, they sold fast. And, uh, I, like usually I, I would totally disclose if we thought that it was not an alpha, but I couldn't, I, I don't, I forget if I asked Eric and maybe I didn't ask, I didn't want to be too forward and say like, I didn't want him to like ha- put him in an awkward spot where he had to leak information to me. So I was just like, all right, Tony, like Tony swears it's an alpha told you guys this is what the artist says who knows sometimes <laughs> so like no one knows for certain what's in alpha i mean right. so i find it hard to believe that like eric 100 percent committed he probably said something like i'm gonna try to make it work for alpha um but like simon would always be very careful to caveat that nothing is final even the latest tts cards are not final we could pull whatever we want we could change whatever we want so right yeah so we, we just don't know like i'm rambling here but long story short we don't know for sure um so i thought maybe like since this the artwork for it came out so late that um because i think i don't think it's like tony had just completed it very recently i think he had done it a while ago so i was thinking more that maybe this would be like a that eric was holding out as a surprise because it's such a sick looking artwork um for like an alpha packs or maybe it'd be like a promo card that maybe rudy or someone would reveal or um like a like a just a, I was I was playing with the idea with like maybe he'll just throw a card into the pledge packs that he didn't tell us about just as kind right. of like a cool reward um, <laughs> to all the backers. But yeah, so I don't know. Like it's it's, it's elusive. <laughs> yeah, it's and I'm just reading it and the, the mechanic of this because remember you've got the card draw. However, yeah, um, you know when it you lose your next turn, so that's just it. Just I I don't know. But uh, to me, I think it screams Arthurian legends all day. And I think yeah. there's a, I remember uh, there's a little panda that's hidden in the, in the gold. Little panda face. Oh, yeah, you're right. So in the, um, <laughs> let's see, do I have the full? I was responding to Solar Guard. He says AL for sure. <laughs> so he sounds confident in that opinion. I'm wondering why he thinks that. So let me see. Hopefully I added that to the full art gallery because I want to show what you just said. Um, this one came out kind of late, so I might have gotten behind in adding. Yeah, so here's Tony's artworks mm-hmm. starting here. Oh, I got to go add that in. I know he sent that. I mean, obviously, I sold the painting, so I had an image of it. Ooh, actually, well, hopefully, I didn't spoil something for you. Sorry, man. <laughs> no, not for, <laughs> no, I knew it was in there, but like you might have spoiled it for people uh, on the um, on the live here. My bad, but yeah. my bad, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we were talking earlier how like Tony likes to hide Easter eggs in all his paintings. So what he's talking about here is under this text box somewhere in here. You guys can go figure it out when you see when you get the foil card and you have the full art on the back. If it's an alpha, um, there's a panda beer hidden. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. And I think there was I think he told me like, oh, and that's not all. There's other stuff hidden. So make sure you're looking close. That's what he wants people to do. Um, but yeah, his his uh, ability to kind of just the finish quality like. These rocks look so realistic. Um, just an amazing artist. Yep. He was, um, I talked about this in, in some other videos, but like Tony did some, did a lot of magic stuff early on, in like some of the earlier sets, not like Alpha, I don't think, but he was at, um, he worked for TSR um, with, back in like, I don't know, it must have been 70s or 80s, let's say, with Alan Pollock and Jeff Easley. And those guys were doing like D&D stuff, I think. And then um, they all they all did magic stuff too eventually. But then he like stopped doing art commissions for like 15 years. And I think he just returned for sorcery. Um, and he was like a prison guard or something, you know? Oh, so wow. he like completely walked away from it. And uh, the reason I know that is I was talking with him. I've talked to him a few times on the phone and like a lot over like Facebook Messenger and stuff. And he, he sent me like on Messenger um, like a, one of his old magic cards, one I hadn't seen before. And then like one of his newer sorcery cards. And he's like, what do you think of this, this magic card? And I didn't know it was from magic. Um, and I was like, it looks awesome. He's like, well, what do you think? Like compared to like what I've done recently. And I was like, it looks like you never stop. And he's like, that's what I was hoping for. <laughs> you know, nice. He was worried that his like skills had atrophied <laughs> after like a 15 year hiatus. So I'm sure he was probably like sketching and doodling and stuff. Like he didn't go cold Turkey, but he hadn't done any like full up commissions for like 15 years. 
right. which is wild. Um, cause like, yeah, he definitely did not miss a step, man. Like his talents, like unreal. All his, all his artworks are unbelievable in this game. All right. Withering hero. <clears throat> so you remember, do you remember in discord when there was like a different artwork version of Alter. this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that one we think might have been scrapped or it could be introduced as an alternate art, but we thought this was the one for Alpha, you know, right. so it's not in there. You think it's you think it's gonna be in there? I uh, I think I do. I think it's gonna be in there. Yeah, uh, this, I'm gonna say I I'm gonna say there's a chance here that it's not in Alpha and it's also not in Ethereum Legends, and it's in that ooh. Angels and Demons set that we think is coming, or Light there and Darkness, go. whatever the hell it is, because it's an angel. But for that same reason, it could be an alpha to plant the seed for that set, just like we have a lot of devilish like cards, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to like plant the roots of that in alpha. So then you have synergistic expansibility in those future um, expansion sets. So I will say in alpha for that reason, I don't think Eric will have the discipline to hold it for like two more future sets, which could be two years away. Right. <laughs> so I'm saying in, in alpha. Okay. Ben I'm, I'm going says, with uh, you. Ben says uh, Curio card has alt art. So, yeah. I mean, is it a Curio that there was a different... It, I, that can come up a few times because, like I said earlier, you know, some of these artists did paint things that they don't know, haven't seen at all yet in card form. And there's only about 35, yard, 35 cards or so that haven't been revealed. And we might be looking at like a subset of it in this list of 32 to 33 cards. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So maybe though some of those are alt arts. Maybe some are Curios and... Maybe some are just Arthurian legends, you know? That's the fun of it. We don't know. It's going to be fun when we find out. Okay. Oh, yes. Yokai from Gadu. Yeah. I actually got his print. Um, That's you know, right. Yeah. yeah. Of this so, one specifically, right? Um, Yeah. The cap eyes. You know, the cap yeah. Eyes. Yep. Nice. I remember um, a reveal. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Elite Demons, uh, this thing, it's, it's going to be an alpha um, for yeah. sure. 100%. Uh, <laughs> Once on your turn, you may discard a water site to flood the site and untap you. Okay, tap us. Uh, I think this just needs a little rework. I think it's going to be in Arthurian Legends. Um, it, it's went through so many different iterations because I, I don't know if you remember he had a um, uh, oh, leather something was a key, key mechanic in the game and, and now it's gone. Uh, iron Skin. Mm. It was oh, yeah. Iron Skin. That's what it was. Yep. 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 Okay. Um, so you what do you say? You think it's Arthurian Legends or Alpha? No, no, I think it's Alpha. It's gonna it'll oh. be Alpha. It just needs it needs to be reworked, retweaked. Okay. What about um so are there a lot of demons in Alpha? Um I don't think there is, actually. I think there might be hmm. that's a good question. I don't know. I don't think there is a lot of demons to be to be honest. Okay. With you. Yeah, I wonder if they're playing with uh pulling nose or again if that's going to be something that needs to be in there to plant the, the seeds for a future mm -hmm. expansion. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. I don't, I don't have a strong opinion. I can't, I don't know why you'd have a card like this in Arthurian legend. So I'll say alpha. <laughs> right. It just seems like two, uh, yeah, two out of bed with uh, Arthurian lore, unless there's something, I don't know. I'm not an expert on it. So who knows, but I say alpha. All right. Um, I think this is the last one. Um, the airship. Marta Molina. You want me to read it? Let's see. Yeah, go going. ahead. All right. Any player may tap an ally here. Airship. <clears throat> Airship flies to a site up to three steps away, carrying that ally and any other allies here. Can't be picked up. Okay. Kinda, it seems a little complicated to me. Yeah. Any player may tap an ally here. Flies to site three steps away, carrying that ally and any other allies here. Can't be picked up. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Um, I mean, the mechanic. It's it's both players get to utilize this card. Um, oh, five demons in alpha right now. Let's go. Yeah. Um, interesting. Uh, it it's a uh, airship, so it's a it's a vehicle. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's gonna be an alpha. I just uh, I don't know. Maybe they're gonna rework it because both players could utilize it. Um, yeah. Just. just I don't have the answer. I wish I did, but uh, I think it's going to be an alpha. Alpha, yeah, yeah. I don't, uh, I don't envision um, soldiers flying in on airships in Arthurian legends. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll say alpha. 
it's pretty pretty i love this artwork man it's, oh. it's like a, it's a lot different than um some of marta's other pieces just like the night sky she wanted she wanted to do a, an embellished print with me on this one and That'd i was cool. like yeah i was like that's a sick art like she was really into it she was like let's either do like a alternate art of it like she just did for pristine paradise or an embellished print and i was like well let's do um the pristine paradise we did first and i was like let's just wait and see if it's an alpha or not you know that might make Dude, a difference to people <laughs> that alt art on the paradise was oh yeah. my gosh that thing was beautiful man yeah really <laughs> nice maybe she'll do some prints of those um all right is that the last one i think we're gonna see ball lightning next Ooh, yeah so that's yeah, all the uh alpha in and out um I don't know what, how you doing on time again. Damn, almost two hours. So two hours. kudos I'm... to like shovels who was there the whole time, and a few <laughs> others were in and out, been hopping around. You know, eight to fifteen people. Um, I guess like I got a little more time if, if people have questions and want to throw anything out there. Um, let's see. Did you have anything else you wanted to bring up, Mike? Or maybe like while we're waiting for questions, you want to talk about your channel and. Yeah, I'll just talk about my channel real just because I'll, I'll plug myself really quick. So yeah. I'm Mike with Mean Muggin in Games. Uh, I primarily just do content on sorcery and cryptic and a little bit of uh, flesh and blood. I'm a very competitive flesh and blood player. Um, just a little bit about me. Uh, that's my background. I'm, I'm part of uh, Team Card Advantage uh, for flesh and blood. So shout out to those guys. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I love this game. This is turned into a, a a side hobby to almost a full-time gig after i get off my regular job <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, uh, I hear that that's you yeah. gotta do late nights early morning <laughs> yes sir yeah no but uh yeah. that's me i do have a, a buddy his name's nathaniel um he does uh, uh he does a little thing in the morning it's called a uh, good coffee bad pools because usually <laughs> when we open up packs it's not good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we have good nope. coffee um, is he like your partner on the channel or does he kind of just float in and out yeah he's, he's he is. so we kind of like made this youtube together you know because we're okay. just sitting at the bar and so and let me i just want to say about mean mugging in games why that's such a weird name <laughs> uh i have a yeah. a vision it's a three to five year plan ultimately i want to open up my my own card shop and yeah. the the basis is going to be people to come in to just uh sit down have a cup of coffee or beer at night, you know, it'll be open up early in the morning, late at night. And then we also have card games, not, and, you know, we want to do sorcery, cryptic, and uh, even Uno, anything kind of casual mm -hmm. gameplay. Uh, but th that's the vision. That's why it's called Mean Muggin Games. Mean Muggin, because, you know, if you want to spike coffee, you can have a spike coffee. So, yeah. So that, that, that's where that name came from. But okay. it's a five year cool. plan to make a, to have a brick and mortar store eventually. But this is just Sweet. a little foundation, a little stepping stone. So you want to tell the people where you're located? Where, where are you going to stand that store up? Yeah, it's going to be either. Uh, so I'm from Pensacola, Florida. I'm in the Panhandle. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm literally 45 minutes from Mobile, Alabama. So it, the, the store will either be in Pensacola or Mobile. One of the two. <laughs> okay. Is there is there like a big uh, gaming community down there? Um, no, that's that's the thing. It's it's because uh, we are a I'm, a I'm a Navy veteran, retired veteran. Yeah. Um, nice. so, uh, there's, we have so many, uh, students that come through the Navy in Pensacola, Florida, that there's, you know, the, uh, the gaming community is not really there because we churn so many bodies. Uh, mm -hmm. but you know, everybody loves coffee, everybody loves beer and everybody loves yeah. just playing some casual games. So, uh, I want to make it a point yeah, that, that we can put it on the map and do something. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. That's, that's a cool concept. You, I think I said to you one time, you and your buddy are like the most chill two guys i've ever seen <laughs> in my life you know you're always just like happy and like nice positive attitudes really nice to see like it's you know gaming communities could get super toxic oh um, yeah a lot so i always like appreciate that when i see like positive people out there so that's cool man that'd be a yeah i hope you get that five years huh so within yeah, five <laughs> within five years that's the plan man i you know as long as i keep on grinding you know 200 subs the goal is to try to get to over a thousand subs by the end of the year um, but I'll be realistic and, uh, you know, make a realistic goal. So like the end of this month, just trying to you get to 250 and just, you know, go from there. But, yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully things will, I mean, the company's done very limited marketing. That's an interesting talking point. Cause I like, I, I used to talk to Eric and Simon all the time and be like, you guys got to like 
step on the gas after that Kickstarter debut, you know, like don't let the, I was worried about like an attrition of momentum mm -hmm. um, by the time, cause it's been like, it's going to be probably like a full year almost um, from the Kickstarter when it finally gets fulfilled. Um, so, but their philosophy was like, I was talking to Simon about this one time and um, he was saying like, anytime they would, put out information or do like an event or something, they would just get completely slammed with inquiries about where can I buy this product? Like what, like when am I going to get it? Blah, blah, blah. Like a million questions. Right. And people were relentless and it yeah. became like overwhelming. And I think it just became a distraction. Um, so their philosophy is since there's nothing to sell right now, they didn't want to like really invest a lot of time and energy in marketing just yet. But I think we're going to see that really escalate and ramp. Um, as we lead up to fulfillment in the next couple of months and then beyond, obviously to try to, they want to, they got to grow the market for beta, you yeah. know, and take a step forward. So we'll see some of that. I'm going to be doing, um, like a, I did a written, I did a lot of written Q and a interviews with the artists. So I did that with Eric too. Um, spoiler alert. So I got to work on that and write that up and, um, probably host that on my website and he'll help get the word out on it. And then, um, the plan was I was talking with Simon before he departed is trying to do some interviews like like a uh, YouTube style like this with some of the members of the team. So hopefully that'll be coming oh, too. Be, as part of part of their marketing efforts. You know, that that would be really, really cool. I love the, yeah. the insights uh, on, on, the, on the team, um, you know, yeah. and that's like like me, you know, like you said earlier, you know, I travel, I play. I, you know, I play a lot of games, man, and I'll, I'll put some miles to go to uh, these events. And um, I went to an event, uh, I think it was like last month in um, South Carolina, Charlotte, Charlotte, South Carolina. Um, and it was a cryptic event, but uh, I had a mission, man. And that mission was to meet George. And I, I know George personally and to show him the game of sorcery because he was on the fence of it. And, um, yeah. you know, I, I took the print and play files and I went out there and, um, you know, went to a cryptic event, played in the cryptic event, had a fun time with that event. But, uh, my sole purpose was to show him sorcery and uh i think he liked the game and um so yeah you know just going to to people seeing the game i mean that's that's what i do i go to these events i uh, see if it's cool if it's all right if i could play this game and if they say yeah you know i bust it out and i always get like yeah, some kind nice. of a following like you know <clears throat> hey show me how to play this so it's it's really really neat and uh yeah. me and my buddy play play at our lgs like every other week um and we we live stream so yeah, I love it. Love this game, man. This game is just—it's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's um, you know, it's pretty obvious it's a slam dunk from an art perspective, and I think um, Eric's banking on once people just comes out in stores and people start bringing it to events like you were just describing, like the art's going to speak for itself. It's going to grab mm -hmm. your attention, and then it's good to hear from a game player that like you're super into the gameplay and you think that's like it's legit you know it's not just some half-assed <laughs> like no, weekly design game like people are resonating with it and picking it up and liking it that's important it, it, uh, it's legit and not to put other games down you know i love flesh and blood i'm a very competitive player and like i said i'm part of team card card advantage but um mm. you know this game's not even out yet and most of my time is towards this game because i i have an absolute blast with it um this this is my baby now <laughs> nice yeah cool man yeah, that's great to hear. So, you, you, like, you were around in Kickstarter. Were you playing back then in some of the early print and play? Oh yeah, um, all all the way from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was my lead in to ask you, what can you tell us about development um, evolution from like, what, what was that nine ten months ago compared to like the state it's in now? The state it's in now, and that goes back to that community aspect of why I really enjoy this because everything way back then was you know op. And then they get the we're they're getting the commentary from the players, and um, now I think we've got a really I think we've dialed it in. I think there might be a little tweaks that we could do here and there, but what is out on version zero point eight is pretty fine tuned. I think the gameplay is is very good, and um, it's only going to get better, man. It's yeah. it, I think it's a slam dunk. Awesome. So we got a question. We'll take a few questions before we call it. If you've got a few more minutes. <clears throat> so solar God says, what are your thoughts on keeping products sealed or crack everything? <laughs> what, so what you answer first from a game player perspective, are you a collector or slash investors as well? Or uh, I'm just a, a player. I am horribly. Uh, unfortunately I'm all three. 
<laughs> okay. So investor, you know, collector and player. Um, mm-hmm. I'm to be honest with you, I, I I've contemplated about keeping a case sealed, but I'm not. I'm cracking everything. I'm searching <laughs> for those curios cards, um, and I'm trying to make sure that I have a set to play with because, uh, you know, even though beta's around the corner, um, I don't know. I I I'm I'm gonna open up everything. That's just me. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, just for the investors think sealed product um, is probably your best. It's like um, your best bet that that lasts the test of time because you don't know early, especially early on, you don't know what the big hit cards are. So you might sell them prematurely. You might open a box pack case and get a bunch of junk that's not worth anything. Sure. Um, versus like a sealed product box, just the unknown of the chase that could be inside. Uh, will carry value as things become more scarce over time. So that's the investor mentality, I think. But like in sorcery, I think there's like an incredible amount of chase that really is very innovative and exceeds other games um, from a few perspectives. Like you have 400 cards, which is insane. Like I think I want to say Magic Alpha might have been in the 280s or something. Maybe it was 300 something, but 400 is massive for yeah. one. So like to to compile a complete set is going to be very difficult. And on top of that, like a foil of every single card and the pull rates on those foils make those extremely difficult to acquire. So I think there's going to be like a pretty healthy market of people trying to buy, sell, trade those. So these are these are all like arguments for opening, I think, because oh, yeah. I think like there's going to be a healthy trade market, certainly to, for people trying to, to complete sets um, by buying and selling because again the complete sets like you can't possibly pull them all in packs but then on top of that there's a whole nother level of chase in the curio cards which Mm -hmm. i think like people never talk about the curio cards for some reason and maybe it's just because we don't know what they are but it's (laughs) i think i talked about this in like my last video or two i don't know like it it takes you back to the early 90s where you couldn't go on the internet and find a complete deck list like we don't know what these curios are and they're not going to tell us before release so the only way you can find out is through the pack opening experience and then or like people will do openings you know it'll become public or they'll start posting them in discord and stuff right so we'll discover them but it's only going to happen through pack opening so i think that's going to be like super exciting and i am speculating that the curios might be even more rare than the foils. Um, they might be like very rare inserts and we don't know how many of them nor what they are and um, what the pull rates are. Right. So I think like that, that's going to create like a chase, like a frenzy of like people. It's going to be irresistible to open and try to f- discover those. So um, my vote is like open most. And and like the, the reality is most um, upstart games fail eventually or their value trails off. So, I think it's like more risky to keep everything sealed and expect to hit a home run than to just like open and participate in the market or play the game, you know, if you're not like right. an investor or collector um, or just go for them early, you know, and try to try to buy, sell trade to acquire the uh, the sets. So I think opening yeah, is going to be a big deal. There's going to be a lot of people cracking. Sure. Um, so, all right. What are some of the que- other questions coming in here? You see any, Mike, that look interesting? I don't know. Does it let you nominate a question or do I have to click it? Let Ooh, me know if you know. see one that looks interesting. Let's Let's scan it here. for a minute. Black shield. Let's see. They can't release AL. Out there, this legend is not released. It's like a print. <laughs> Talking about Lorcana and Disney. <laughs> what do they have out? Mark. Someone. <laughs> People are asking about Simon conspiracy theories. We don't know anything about oh, this Simon situation. He left. Another guy came in. That's that's the extent of what we know. Eric said he's in high demand, so I assume he got another another opportunity. And I joked. I was not joking on the last one where I said like I can't imagine a job better than the one he had. Like we're working for sorcery. So right. Uh, but like, I also said like maybe he's like a startup guy and he just like got it. He, like he comes in around Kickstarter phase gets it to release, helps build like the early seeds of the company. And then he's on to the next, you know, I could, I could see that because I know he, I've talked to him privately, you know, a few times. Um, and he's, he's, he's very professional. He doesn't like overstep and tell me anything proprietary or overly sensitive, but, um, I know he had like a lot of industry connections and a lot of experience. 
which gave me the sense that maybe he's a startup guy that like has worked on a lot of projects, got them launched, and then he goes and consults with the next one. Um, that's my speculation. So maybe he's like going to go help some other project or, but it could be anything. Maybe he had personal reasons, health reasons, himself, family member, who the hell knows? We know nothing. Yeah. Um, but so it's not even worth speculating in my opinion, but uh, I know he like, he was doing a lot behind the scenes. Um, so there's, it's, someone's got to pick up that slack and uh, community like the discord's kind of like the wild, wild west these days, the official discord. So it could use some moderation and maybe doing some, someone doing some community management, but it's not like people are being vicious or it's out of control though. It's just like conversation goes on wild tangents outside of sorcery. Sometimes it seems. Yep. So, no. And uh, you know, just um, my, my two cents on it is, is I have no idea. And um, it seemed yeah. to be, you know, a good, you know, a good separation. They were both uh, professional and um, yeah, I wish them the best and you know, I'm going to carry on and, and uh, yeah, it was good to have you Simon. And yeah, yep. Here, we're getting some gameplay questions. So these are, I'm, I want to know what you would say as well. It's up your alley. <laughs> so we could both answer this one in different ways probably, but your perspective would be different as a player. Do you think it's uh, good enough to stand the test of time? Let's, let's just say test of time means this game is still around in five years. In five years, I... Okay. And and like I said, this is my baby, and I don't want to disrespect the game, but I'm going to be real. Um, I think it will survive the test of or the five years. Um. 400 cards is a huge set. So there's a lot of cards to be played with. Uh, my only concern is even though it's a one, one, one set release a year, that it, that's my problem. I hmm. think there has to be a supplemental set, at least one. One supplemental set. Per year? Okay. Per year. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. Like, I think... And I could totally see that changing, you know. Um, I think Eric realizes that's very experimental and uh, counter to like, I think he said this, you know, that's not, yeah, he fully understands that's not how any other TCG operates. They do it quarterly or even more sometimes. Um, so I think that is something they will address in some way. I'm wondering if it's because the team is like really tiny right now. I don't think they could possibly execute faster than that until they grow the team but right. this first year is going to be an anomaly as well because you're getting alpha release let's call it march you know and say it's mm -hmm. going to be the end of first quarter and then they've said they're shooting for like eight to ten weeks later maybe you get beta so that's like your next step of like presumably largely reprinting alpha so you can reach a larger market and you know if alpha prices on a secondary market start going up people can access it affordably so that's going to completely mitigate that situation and then i believe they said they're trying to fit in arthurian legends within this year so for the like us early adopters we've been waiting since we were born for this game you know it feels like a lifetime but for most people they're just going to be they're just discovering the game like this game is really tiny like it's, it's right. easy to forget that this is pre-release like it's in its infancy um so a lot of people are just going to be discovering beta for the first time and then they're going to get potentially Ethereum legends before the end of the year. So they're going to get two sets in year one. And then maybe the team that allows the team um, enough time to ramp their staffing and uh, work with their factory and distribution partners to be able to do, like you say, two sets a year, I think would be the sweet spot. Like every six months or every six months would be great. something like maybe like a say, small expansion to supplement core sets kind of thing. Right. I just, I just think, you know, like mm -hmm. after we get through the Ethereum legends, you know, like if they just do one set, a, a year like it just how do you retain retain that that hunger that people want those different cards so that's that's just my that's my only concern other than that gameplay is phenomenal i think it, it'll it, it's only going to get better um but that's that's just my my concern that that's it right there it's just, just the one they need to incorporate i think one set one one supplemental set okay yeah it'll be interesting to see how they address that um, a lot of people like the one set a year from affordability perspective, but yeah, for sure. Yeah, you got to balance that with players that that desire change and an evolving meta. You know. Mm -hmm. All right, so here's one you only you can answer. How different is it from Magic and Fab? Completely different. Completely <laughs> different because of the grid. 
because Mm -hmm. because of the grid um you know there is subtle mechanics you know like like charge equals haste um you know and tapping abilities but the grid brings a whole different aspect incorporating two different it's not two different decks so you get your sights and you have your spell books your spells so you're playing with two different you know decks essentially you got to be very strategic about the game um and it's just it's and then the artwork is just beautiful and then when you're playing the game you know my mind kind of races because i'm just like envisioning like you know a big old bolt or a big old lightning bolt that's about to take me out so it, it's yeah. you kind of choose your own outcome and just uh if you lose you lose it's 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 that's the thing it's it's relaxed it's i think it's meant to be played fun and you know um and that's why i really gravitate towards it because it's just it's just a different game and it, it's just super fun to play uh, completely different than fab and magic yeah okay Cool. I like this guy's uh, logo, by the way. Money Vikings. It's a funny name too. <laughs> a money. What is a money Viking? That's, right? that's pretty. That's pretty <laughs> slick. Um, all right. Do you think sorcery is a collector's TCG like Pokemon? So I'm guessing what he means by that is that it's more of a collectible than like a legitimate game you play, since like Pokemon isn't super competitive or is probably played as Fab and MTG. No, I um I, I think it hits it I think it hits both both worlds. I think collective collector's aspect, of course, hundred percent boom. But I think player aspect as well, it's gonna hit that once people play the game and find out how how fun it is. And this this game can be an organized play game. Hands down. Easily can be done. You could have organized play. Um so I, I, I honestly think it's gonna hit I think it's better than Pokemon because it's going to hit both both aspects. It's going to hit player base and it's going to hit collector base. Yep. No, I agree. Yeah, I mean, I can't speak to, to the uh, player side, but I think it's got insane collectability because of the art, because of all the chase elements that I was talking about. Uh, it's just like, it's going to be an art showcase in your binder that unlike any other. Ma- Magic has like amazing art and like incredible artists for sure. But like the full, the full card art, in this game is nuts, you know, like, and I'm talking about the regular face with the text boxes, but then the foils with the full art back, I think that's going to be a massive differentiator and something super yep. special. I think I got some kids lurking, so I'm on borrowed time here. <laughs> oh, got a baby. Got a baby hiding behind the paintings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's take one more. She's, she's laughing at you laughing. All right. Um, I don't know if there's, there's, I guess there's no other questions. So any any closing remarks you want to say before um about your channel or um any any departing comments before we wrap it up? No, um uh, you know, I just everybody that's here, I mean, word of mouth is going to be the way to get this game seen. Um if you have the print and play files, if you're at an LGS, get those print and play files, take them to your LGS um uh, and and play the game. Um you know, I stream my footage uh, at my LGS, and I'm actually about to put out a video that I made a temporarily, or it's a, it's an overhead device, so I could stream the game portably okay. um, for less than wow. thirty dollars. PVC pipes, you're good to go, man. So nice. um, I'm gonna do a little video about that, but uh, just get the game out there, guys. I mean, this the, the artwork's amazing, the gameplay's amazing. Um, you know. My channel, you know, I would love to see they, they get a thousand views. And yeah, you know, I've already gave you my three to five year game plan on, on on what I'm trying to do. But ultimately, it's it's about sorcery. And I want sorcery to uh, succeed. And I think it will. Uh, I just think as as a community, we need to get out there. We need to showcase showcase the game. So that, that's All what right. I have, man. And, uh, you know, and thank you, Mike. You're you. I mean, the legwork that you have done for the community is just uh, irreplaceable. You 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 you've put this game on the map, and um, you know ultimately, you know a lot of kudos definitely goes to you. Um, so it, I'm actually watering up because I think you've done such a good <laughs> job. Yeah, so, Damn, wow! Yeah. Thanks, thanks, man. Yeah, I'm flattered. Yeah, yeah definitely uh, really appreciate that. And like your channel's pretty sweet too. Like I appreciate um, people that are out there handling the gameplay aspect because. 
I'm a definitely a novice in that realm. I've, I've watched people play, but like I got, I got an eight year old, four year old and two year old. So my <laughs> playing time is like nil because I spent all my waking moments, like interviewing people, writing articles, managing the website, managing the Facebook group, doing YouTube videos when I can, right. fleeting opportunities. So okay. playing isn't in the cards when you got little kids like that until they can play with me or they can go play with their friends and I can have a bit of a life back. <laughs> sure. So oh, I definitely need to shout out some people too, man, if you don't yeah, mind, like yeah, go I've for got it. to, uh, sh- big shout outs to other content creators, Hane, um, which is, he's got a, a YouTube channel, which is wizards den. Um, you know, I do content, but this guy's content's just like up on another level, man. <laughs> I, I'm not scared to say it. he's got some fu- freaking killer, uh, content on sorcery. So shout out to Hane, tedsbasement.com. Big shout out to you. Um, we did a, a, a learn to play on sorcery. So uh, Ted, thank you so much for everything that you do. Um, one of my mentors, Louis DeGeorge on Kitchen Table TCG. Uh, big shout out to Louis. Uh, he, he's the man. He's the one that really got me ultimately into a lot of card games. So thank you so much. Um, and George. From Compete Sports, big shout out to George and uh, all the Discord members uh, that are in Sorcery: Mike Pelly, Zalem, um, Will T, uh, Chris Jones. Um, if I'm if I'm missing out, people, I'm so sorry. You know, I play a lot of games with you guys. Just big shout out to that Discord community. Um, you guys are yep. awesome. So yeah, it's been a lot of like long timers that have uh, been around the community for a long time. So. It's cool. These guys, a lot, a lot of them, like they were around last August, September, November, you know, kind of, uh, they've been waiting forever, you know, so they kind of like have been less active in the discord, but they're still out there lurking and they're super excited and you see them pop up in the, in the Facebook groups or in comments and YouTube videos at times. So they're going to, they're coming back. It's going to be fun again to reunite all over the world again, like I say. So that's, that's pretty sweet. I, I'm just um, waiting for, for the official, uh, uh, you know, come and meet us day. I'm going to be there, yeah. man, you know, like, uh, yeah, like a, like in a funk, you know, an event. That'd be so cool. I hope it happens. Yep. Yeah. So uh, the IX art show is in uh Reading, Pennsylvania every October, I think it is. Um, if people can get out to Pennsylvania, that's a sweet show. Cause a lot of, uh, great artists are there and there's a lot of like incredible artists and sorcery that are there. Like, like I say, every year, so you can meet them in person. We're going to have product for them to sign this year. You're going to be able to buy their prints or original arts. Maybe we'll, maybe they'll have Arthurian legends art, um, this year ready for sale would be pretty nice. That'd be sweet. Um, so yeah, that's an opportunity. I don't know if sorcery is planning shows and things, but hopefully, hopefully that does happen. Um, before we part, I just want to show again, Elvira's, um, painting going to be coming to auction on June, uh, January 13th. Um, and again, like most of the proceeds here will go to her and, um, something she's got going on. I don't, I, I don't want to like reveal her personal stuff, but, um, it's going to benefit her in a significant way. Um, so that'd be a fun auction. Um, I'm always, I sell sample cards and paintings like recently on auctions. And I'm always like kind of annoyed when uh, the sample cards do better than the paintings. I was like, how is this possible? It's like a one of one <laughs> and his artwork is God tier, like absolutely amazing. Um, so hopefully that does well for her and the sample cards are like awesome too. You know, it's just a great collectible. Um, so yeah, a lot of good stuff going on, you know, on Mike's channel, mean mugging games, go, go check that out on YouTube, collector art house discord and, and the Facebook groups, um, the official sorcery discord. There's a lot of, a lot of opportunity to engage with other people that are really into sorcery and it only gets better. You know, it's, it's going to be exciting going into release and then Rudy will probably, probably blow the doors off on uh, elf investments. And then it's going to be pure chaos. Hey, that's my <laughs> lot. My last take, man, I'm telling you right now, I think when Rudy does an official Rudy sorcery video, we'll buckle up everybody. <laughs> yep. No doubt. It happens every time. So, yep. All right. Well, thanks for everybody. There was like a lot of these guys hung in there for two hours. Pretty insane um so yeah thanks to you man for coming on on short notice here and uh you mentioned like a bunch of the other major players and youtube channels hopefully we can collab with those guys in the near future and uh do more of this always a good time look forward to it fantastic time thanks mike really do appreciate it all right thanks bro take care appreciate the kind words again take care everybody peace see you